let me also read some of the names of our participants here. We have Amphi A. Anyasco from Barutuan National High School all the way from El Nido in Palawan. We have also Marcel Andrada, hey, ma'am, from Santo Nino National High School in Erigal City. And we have Ma Marcel Makinano from LCBA. Good afternoon. We have a participant who came all the way from Pangasinan. And another one from La Union, San Jose Elementary School in Sudipen, La Union, Ma'am Ruby Castro. Good afternoon. Again, welcome to our conference here, sponsored by the Philippine Institute of 21st Century Educators. We still have 10 minutes before the start of our formal or the formal start of our webinar. And again, I would like to remind our participants here of our netiquette. It is recommended of you to open your camera. And again, make sure that your microphone is always muted. Use headphones or earphones. You may find a seat or location that is comfortable and well lighted. Advice to wear business smart or casual attire. You finish the whole virtual conference and you're expected to, com uh, as you complete, I mean, the evaluation form, you are expected to get a certificate. We have those who are asking that question in our chat box here. And again, that's the answer to your question. You are also expected to direct your concern through personally messaging us on our page or our email address so we can provide answer to your concern. We already have more than 70 participants available here in Zoom. And we have a confirmed around 300 participants for this gathering. So we'll see if they can be available throughout the whole, the whole duration of this conference. Okay. To those who don't have a camera, it's okay. As long, the most important one is for you to listen and most importantly to absorb the information that we are to impart to you in this conference. We have Sir Ismael Rivera. Good afternoon, sir. He's all the way from UNP in Vigan City. We also have Ma'am Annette Rosell from Crossing Bayabas National High School in Davao City. So we have a great number of participants who are educators in the basic education, especially in elementary and high school. We also have Johnny Biholi. He's all the way from the division of Maguindanawan from Pangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, specifically from Paglat National High School. Good afternoon, sir. We have also Ma'am AJ Villegas from Vocational High School in Tondo, Manila. Okay, good afternoon, ma'am. I'm sorry, it's ma'am Rose Ramirez. And the school is AJ Villega, Vocational High School from Tondo, Manila. We also have, we have a great number of participants from Mindanao. We have another one here from Dipolog City National High School in Bara, Dipolog City, Zamboanga del Norte, Sir Marjan Yapa. Good afternoon, sir. We have a great number of participants from Palawan. A while ago, we have one from El Nido. Another is from Koyo Campus of Palawan State University, Ma'am Mary Ann Sim. Good afternoon, ma'am. Let us check our time. We still have seven minutes left before the official start of our conference. Again, I am recommending it to our participants to kindly write their complete name in the chat function and also inform to us about the institution where you are affiliated with. We have Ma'am Ophelia Salamatin. A blessed Friday to all from PUP. And we have Ma'am Emily Beltran from TUP Cavite. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, po, sir. 
Okay, good. We have also one participant here from Aklan State University, New Washington Campus. We have Sir Randy Pastor. And we have Ma'am Brenda L. De Los Santos from Gat Andres Bonifacio High School of Taguig City and Pateros. We have many sir. participants also came all the way from the National Capital Region. So again, good afternoon to all of our participants from NCR. And again, if you notice, our participants came all the way from different regions of our country. And again, we are happy that we have a great number of participants who came all the way from Luzon, not only here in Iloilo, but also other parts of the yeah, Visayas yeah. and also in Mindanao. Fine. Okay, chillax, chillax po muna tayo dyan. As we still have five minutes left. Allow me to have uh, the remaining minutes we have to use this to <coughs> greet our participants here. Okay? We have Ma'am Sheba Palyar from Zamboanga, Sibugay for the Technic Institute in Kapasalan, Zamboanga, Sibugay. And we have also Ma'am Rosie Bill Torado from Teriga City. Okay. Again, I would like to remind our participants to kindly mute your microphone. Um, if you are not uh, being mentioned in order for you not to interrupt, <laughs> the whole duration of this webinar or of this conference. Ah, Awesome. Okay, we already have more than 100 participants available here in Zoom. And we still have three minutes left before we officially start our session today. But again, I would like to remind our participants here to kindly mute your microphone. We will ask the technical uh, member of, of our organization to kindly facilitate. Again, this is for you not to interrupt, especially if our speaker is already on his own discussion. Okay? While waiting for the formal start of this conference, I would like again to greet some of our participants here. We have Ma'am Marivic A. Payongpong. She's all the way from Lubwaga National High School in Mabungtod Extension from Kalinga Division. Again, good afternoon, ma'am. We have all the way from Cordillera Administrative Region. We have also Ludi Anano from Eastern Visayas State University in Tacloban City in Leyte. We have also Ma'am Jensi Bora from Cebu Technological University. And we have also Ma'am Soseline Batislao. She's all the way from Iloilo State College of Fishery in Dingle Campus. Again, good afternoon to all of our participants here. We have Sir Ray Almonia Duterte from Libak Legislated National High School Division of Sultan Kudarat, Region 12 in Mindanao. We have Ma'am Charmaine A. Luna from Quezon Province, SDO, Quezon. So we have Sir Ray Almonia Duterte. Again, he was, uh, I guess I was able to mention Sir Ray a while ago. And Ma'am Florinda Agan from Misamis Occidental. We have a great number of participants from Mindanao. And also here in the area of Negros Ori Occidental, San Carlos City, in Colegio de Santo Tomas Recoletos, 
Ma Marianita Volo. Good afternoon, Ma Marianita. And Ma Nelia Merin from Visayas State University in Isabel Campus. So, I will have uh, the other participants later on. I will uh, find time to greet also other participants. But prior to that, again, kindly um, prepare yourselves now as we are about to start our conference. Okay, <laughs> Again, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to remind our participants that the virtual conference will start shortly. I would like to remind you of the following rules to follow in the whole duration of this conference. So, for the last time, again, let me remind you of our netiquette. One, you are recommended to open your camera. Two, always mute your microphone. Three, use headphones or earphones. Four, find a seat or location that is comfortable and well-lighted. Five, it is advised to wear business or smart casual attire. You also finish the whole virtual conference and complete the evaluation form for you to get your certificate. Seven, always direct your concern through personally message or PM on our page or our email address so we can provide answer to your concern. For the flow of our virtual conference, we will start first with a prayer, the introduction of the resource speaker, the virtual conference proper, the question and answer portion, and we will end with some announcements. We are presently viewed on different social media platforms. We are presently live here in Zoom and in YouTube at the official channel of Pomi. We also have our delayed telecast in Facebook at the official Facebook page of Pies I 21 Again, I would like to remind our participants here to kindly mute your microphone. The technical committee, please kindly facilitate to make sure that the whole duration of this conference, we are not to hear unnecessary noise throughout the whole duration of this conference. I am Mr. Jose Abrian de Casella. Welcome to another virtual gathering sponsored by the Philippine Institute of 21st Century Education. Again, I am Mr. Jose Abrian de Casella. Another virtual sponsored by the Philippine Institute of 21st Century Educators Incorporated, or PICE I-21. This is in cooperation with Center for Scholarly Researches of Educators in the Philippines Incorporated, or CISRA. We are now on our second year of sponsoring webinars and virtual conferences. It is also more than two years that we have bonded to the many challenges, especially in our field, or most importantly, in the field of education. Amid this pandemic, our requirements and demands on teachers are still increasing, one of which is the making of an action research. Most of us are always cynical also when we talk about research. We always look at it in a negative way, thinking that it is consuming our time, adding requirements to the many we have as educators, and most would say that they are not confident with their process and methodology in the conduct of the research. The making of an action research is perceived by others as difficult, even prior to the pandemic. But the requirement to have one is still existing, especially among master teachers and professors in this new normal. 
Thus, to answer one of the problems we have in the demand of this new normal, the Philippine Institute of 21st Century Educators, together with the Center for Scholarly Research <laughs> of Educators in the Philippines, Incorporated or CSRAP, decided to come up with this virtual conference entitled How to Come Up or titled How to Come Up with an Action Research in a New Normal. This conference is designed for all educators in public and private elementary, secondary, and higher educational institutions. I am happy to see that we have a great number of participants from different parts of the country. We have in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So, to formally start our conference, may I request everyone to be in silence for the prayer. Let's put ourselves in the presence of the Lord, in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we offer everything to you in this conference. We glorify you for this event. And thank you for every person that is with us today. May you guide our speaker so that he would be able to effectively impart his God-given wisdom to all of us. May he be blessed as he continues to share his expertise to everyone who needs them. Continue to protect our nation and all of our brothers and sisters that we may be able to defeat this pandemic. Keep us safe, O oh Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we formally introduce to you our speaker, I would like everyone listening to the different platforms we have to effectively and responsibly use the chat function in raising your questions. You can write your questions or insights while our speaker is having his discussion, but expect it to be answered during the question and answer portion. We will be having the open forum after the speaker's presentation. To those who would like to personally ask questions, you may also press the raise hand button and we will be notifying you ahead if you're recognized. Thank you. We have those who are asking here about their audio. Uh, finally, uh, talk personally or personally message the members of our technical committee for your concern to be answered. I guess that my audio is clear, okay? So to formally introduce to us our speaker, may I request Dr. Cyril De La Fuente to do the honor. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my honor and pride to introduce to you our resource for this afternoon. Our resource person this afternoon is the designated University Director for Knowledge and Technology Management of the Research, Development, and Extension of Cagayan State University in Tibigarao City since 2018, and concurrently the Campus Research Coordinator of Cagayan State University at Lasham. He is occupying the faculty ranks of Assistant Professor Four. He started charting his career as a private elementary school teacher at San Lorenzo Ruiz Educational Institute, private school head at Latin Academy Incorporated, faculty of the School of Education, Arts, and Sciences of the University of St. Louis in Tibigarao, to a faculty and administrator at Cagayan State University. He obtained his Doctor of Philosophy in Educational Management at the age of Master. 23 in 2013. Major in Educational Management in 2011, and B.E.D. Generalist in 2010, and finished academic subject for B.S.Ed. English in 2013. He has published 29 research articles indexed in Scoopers, Starivate Analysis, and ASEAN Citation Index Journal. He has an page index of six and I-10 index of three. Our resource speaker, has presented researchers in various international, national, and regional research conferences and symposia, and was awarded Best Research Presenter and Best Research Paper Awardee. He was awarded as Distinguished Faculty Researcher in the Social Science category of Cagayan State University. He presently serves as editor and reviewer of various 
SCI Web of Science Index and Scoopers, Persevilia Journal, such as International Journal of Learning, Teaching and Educational Research, Page Open as an Article Editor and Reviewer, Journal of Technology and Science Education, Studies of Applied Economics as Guest Editor for Economics of Education, Eurasian Journal of Educational Research, Journal of Social Studies Education Research, and Asia Pacific Journal of Multidisciplinary Research. He has also co authored five books, namely Research Methodology in Quantitative and Qualitative, a Practical Guide for Researchers from Gaps Identification to Publication, How to Conduct Action Research in Education, The Teacher and Community, School, Culture, and Organizational Leadership, How to Write and Publish Your Thesis and how to write and publish your dissertation. In externally and institutionally funded research project of the Cagayan State University in collaboration with the government's different agencies such as the Department of Science and Technology and the Department of Agriculture. He is an associate member of the National Research Council of the Philippines under Division I, Governmental, Educational, and International Policy, and was conferred as a fellow of the Royal Institute of Educators, Singapore. Our colleagues in education, let us welcome in the virtual room, Dr. Gilbert C. Magolod Jr. Okay. Magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Good afternoon to our participants coming from the different regions of the Philippines, from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. <coughs> Allow me to share my, my slide, please. Hello? Am I audible? Narinig po ba ako? Yes, sir. 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 May I request the host to please allow me to be the host for the Zoom link. Uh, okay, sir. Okay, so we are live it, uh, in YouTube. Okay, na. Okay. So may I share to you my slide. So the topic given to me is how to conduct action research in the new normal. And I think this is a way to advance the teaching learning process in the new normal because uh, despite this pandemic we experience and we are still experiencing, uh, let's try to look at the opportunities. Uh, this is a good opportunity and avenue for everyone to have a sharing of our practices, our knowledge with regards to research with regards to classroom-based research. So may I begin my outline, my presentation with the outline. We shall be focusing or orient as well as to review. No, much has been talked about action research. Much has been presented about action research. So as teachers, let's try to review uh, the concept that teaching as a research-based profession in the new normal. Second, we have the available online technologies for action research, particularly in the new normal, which will aid us to conduct researches, to conduct data, and to get uh, together data from our respondents. And of course, the tips on, on implementing interventions and some methods of collecting data. And of course, uh, I shall be giving you researchable topics with regards to the new normal on the impacts on equality equity and efficiency in teaching. So yan po ang pag-uusapan natin sa araw na ito. And I'd like to express my thanks to our participants here. No, napakarami po natin. Ang dami-dami po nating mga knowledge seekers. And it's truly, research is a way for us not only to advance ourselves, but also to uplift the standards of education in our country. So we have this slide here. Uh, if you have a phone, you can kindly go to the slide link and let's try to have 
some sort of survey with regards to your uh, to the difficulties you face with uh, in conducting action research. So, pwede pong punta po kayo sa Islido, then go to islido.com, then put hashtag 992745 or number sign 992745. And let's try to look at this one. What part of action research you face difficulty with? And this is an, is an initial way for me to understand uh, how can I come in para makita natin kung ano ba talaga yung saan tayo pwede mag-improve, saan tayo pwede mag-start. So what part of action research you face difficulty with? This is an active call. Okay. So we have uh, responses. We have four responses. Six. So some of you presented difficulty with the research design. Of course, with the instrumentation, with the methodology, design. We have eight. Tignan po natin. Kasi... Ang sa Zoom is, I think we have 150 participants. And in YouTube, we have 47 online participants. So maraming salamat sa, sa pag-respond. So marami. So we have this one, gathering of data, the theoretical framework, consent of the respondents, even the writing of action research, the RRL, no? the statement of the problem, Okay, so we have 40. Tignan lang natin, ha? Please bear with me. Okay, topic in math. Statistical methods and statistical instruments. We have also theoretical framework and the RRL. Okay, the data gathering instrument. The whole process of making the research. Of course, those who are new being research here, you need to learn more, learn much. Okay, yan. Monitoring the success of your intervention, even in the structure, even in the structure of the action research. Diba? It becomes also problematic sa ating mga teachers, sa ating mga educational practitioners. Particularly also in the statistics. The title itself, which is the very basic one. Okay. So we have 57 responses. And na natin talaga na ang pagkandak ng action research is really a challenge on our part. But I hope that with this presentation we have this afternoon, medyo i-shift natin yung thinking natin. And let's try to look at the opportunity that action research is not really a burden, but it's a way for improvement. It's a way for advancement. Okay? So, ang dami-daming mga concern natin, we have, even in the proposal, I agree with you, to this uh, participant who answered that facing difficulty in writing a research proposal. Because really, the research proposal really is the starting point of research to be funded, particularly for Department of Education, even for state universities and colleges. Time constraints, okay. Okay, so maraming salamat. Now I have now the basis kung ano yung ating mga pwedeng pag-uusapan ngayon. So most of you already presented that these are very important concerns for us teachers, for us practitioners that we need to overcome for us to become successful researchers. Okay, so may nagsasagot pa dyan, Dita Gathering, maraming salamat. Okay, so now, at this point, I'd like also to ask, what level of skill, ito ha, what level of skill do you formulate research questions? Sige nga po. What level of skill do you formulate research questions? Tignan natin yung level nyo. Are you skilled? Somewhat skilled? Okay, somewhat skilled, not, not at all skilled. Okay. Yan, we have tumatakbo-takbo ang data natin. Talagang nagpro-progress tayo. Napaka-active ang ating mga participants. Not at all skilled. Okay. Sige. So, 
Now, if you have noticed, no, don't you think that having these questions can al alre already converted into an action research? No? The availability of data. Kaya nakikita natin sa data, wow, okay, most of the respondents some are somewhat skilled when you talk of formulating the research questions. Kanina may nagsabi ng statement of the problem. So siguro this justifies already that uh, talagang the challenge lies on identifying what is really the problem in the classroom, in the institution, or in the school, even in the district, or even in the division. Okay, so maraming salamat. 74. Okay, we have 74 participants. 43% 40 of that participants are somewhat skilled. And nakikita natin na may 4% na skilled. Okay, tumatakbo pala pa ang, ang polling survey natin. So 5%. So nakikita natin lahat is we need to uh, continue doing uh, uh, research. We need to enhance our skill. Okay, so ma all the sharings na i-share ko sa inyo ngayong hapon na ito are, are most coming from my experiences. Kasi hindi rin po tayo nag-start na skilled. No? We were sharpened, we were trained, we were exposed, and through our experiences, we're, we were able to develop our research skill. Okay, so we have also the last slide survey. Now, how do you see yourself as a teacher researcher? Okay, sabi natin kanina, teaching is a research-based profession. Then, 44%, uh, 52%, not very skilled. Okay. Sige. Nakalibutan ko palang in-acknowledge. Karamihan rin ata ng participants natin ay mga students. No? Yung mga education students. In fact, may mga student ata ako kanina dito. Okay, so not very skilled. So kahit tama po yan, uh, we need to be honest, we need to, to look at ourselves as not really, not all is skilled, but not very skilled because we are practitioners in the field. So kaila, marami pa tayong pwedeng matutunan when we talk of research. Lalong-lalo na new normal ngayon, at sa new normal na yan, kailangan din mabago ang skill natin, kailangan din mabago ang constructs natin ang ating uh, mentality towards uh, in understanding things around us. Okay? So, this is actually a data, no? Not very skilled. Okay. So, with that, another way for us as teachers, no? Is how do we provide also our mentoring support to others? Because when we talk of action research, it's more on our participation. It's more on our mentoring, developing our mentoring spirit. No? Tignan natin. So, kung kayo ba ay teacher, kung kayo ba ay uh, principal, kung kayo ba ay mga teachers ng state universities and colleges, how do you provide mentoring support to your teachers? Is it very high, high, or undecided? It's even low or very low? So, we have... 37, so high. Okay, so the activity this afternoon is a manifestation of providing you the mentoring support for us that together we can do research, we can do something for the improvement of our educational system. Okay, so high, we have 49% out of 82 respondents. Undecided, out of, uh, we have 24% from the 82 respondents. No low, 18%, very high, 4%. Okay, so nakikita natin na talagang hindi lahat, but uh, of course, marami rin sa ating mga practitioners are already providing the support to others. That's what we call the mentoring spirit. That's what we call uh, effective collegiality, the way we provide support to our co-teachers, to our students, Hi. and to our institutions. Okay. okay, hello. 
Okay lang po ba kayo? Okay, sige, let me continue. So now, dahil nag-survey tayo, balikan natin. Action Research and Teaching. Okay, so Borg in 2017, I lifted this from the literature of Borg that according to Borg, teacher research is to improve teaching and learning. Very basic na yan sa atin. I-review lang natin. No? I-review lang natin. Bradbury defines action research as an action and reflection. And it's a way to bridge what we call the theory and practice. For those who are students here in educational management, may subject kayo na educational planning. Even those who are teachers here na enrolled sa MA nila, may subject kayo na educational planning. Lagi natin sinasabi, theory and practice. What is and what should be? How do we bridge between what is and what should be? Okay? And of course, according to Rowell in 2015, It's a transformative, no? Action research seeks transformative change. It's a way to transform, no? Hindi ko na basahin lahat. And of course, for Cohen and Manion in 1994, action research is a small scale intervention. So when we go back to the classroom, magturo tayo, magturo tayo sa classroom natin. Iniisip natin ano ang remediation ko, ano ang intervention ko sa ganitong Uh, problem ng ating is mga students. Even in the operation of the educational system, in the operation of the school system itself, it requires action research. No? Even in the attendance of teachers, the tardiness of teachers, so maraming patutunguhan ang action research. When we talk of action research, hindi natin natatanggal ang intervention dyan or even remediation. And of course, I'd like to emphasize that Enacting change is not easy. It requires time, patience, sound planning, communication, and even our implementation skills. Agree po ba kayo doon? Okay. So, sige. Next slide. I'd like to present to you the difference between fundamental research to an action research. Sinasabi natin, magkaiba po. Sila, pero pareho silang research. But as to the areas, as to the objectives, the problem, the nature, the sampling, the outcome, these are different concepts. So, padaanan lang natin. When we talk of fundamental research, these are actually the researches you are conducting, particularly when you are finishing a degree, when you are enrolled in your dissertation, in your thesis writing, in your subject research and education, in language research. So, Fundamental research because the objective there is to seek facts and establish universal truths. While for action research, it's more on the solution to the prevailing problem in your institution. Pero you can also convert that action research into something that is a fundamental research. Pero ang pag-uusapan kasi natin ngayon ay action research. As to the problem, kung fundamental research, mas malawak, the contextualization is in general circumstance in the field of education. But for action research, we are focusing on the specific problem of that specific institution. As to the nature, fundamental research is more on theoretical and why. But for action research, it's more on practical. It's more on narrow. Hindi kailangan na... You go on with the technical way of writing a research, but it's more on the pragmatic way. No, the philosophy of education in you. Let's be pragmatic. And for sampling, fundamental research, talagang malawak ang samples nyan, maraming variables. But for your action research, we are focusing on the limited and of course limited variables in a limited period of time. As to the outcome, fundamental research is more on the universality. But for action research, it's more on the specific institution. And of course, as to the duration, usually sa university namin, we define a research study, six months lang dapat yan na makanda. Pero pag action research kasi, I just do not know sa Department of Education, if within, it, is, it is within three months, one month, or two months. Pero pag research kasi yan, research study, because we have the definition of a research program to a research project to a research study, eh talagang ang isang research component doon, ang research study should be conducted within six months. 
Again, si Mas Nopo, sa DepEd, kung three months or pwede na yun. Pero as to the time, no, the duration is, uh, even in the way you gather data, no, the maximum could be one session also for action research. And for the process, no, talagang rigid kung fundamental, pero pag action research, talagang uh, technical, uh, not that's so technical. And for the researcher, for fundamental research, talagang tinitignan natin yung field of specialization ng isang researcher. No Field mo ba yung research mo? For action research, all teachers can do action research depending on their field of specialization kung ano man yung gusto nilang i-solve na problema sa kanilang paaralan. As to the instrumentation, fundamental research requires authentic tool, but for action research, it requires teacher-made tests. Even your simple quiz lang na 10 items, as long as reliable and valid to measure the competencies or the skill of the students that can be used as data for your action research. And even for data analysis, complex statistics are used, but for action research, general statistics. So I hope I am giving you the, the concept that when you talk of action research, hindi siya mahirap. Ang, ang talagang mayroon dapat sa inyo sa pagkandak ng action research critical thinking and your ability your, to, to seek, to, to, to address this specific problem in your institution. Okay? So, sige. Now, may I share to you the parts of a research proposal? Sa atin kasi, particularly if we are practicing teachers, hindi rin naman basta-basta makapagkandak tayo ng action research without a research proposal. Lalong-lalo na sa mga taga-Department of Education. Because kung nag-propose kayo ng action research, we have your basic education research fund na hihingin ng pondo. At ang pinaka-basic na definition natin doon is when you ask for a funding coming from your institution, coming from the Department of Education, situit na na meron kayong proposal. Ganon din po sa aming taga state universities and colleges. Talagang proposal-based po siya. Okay? So for the action research parts, we have the title. What, do you, what is the title of your research? No? As to the introduction and rationale, dapat ang ina-address natin doon, ano yung pinaka-issue, ano yung pinaka-problema, at ano yung intervention na i-introduce ninyo. And... We do not do research without literature review. And the literature review will justify the research gap. No? For the research question also, what are the questions you need to answer? For the scope and limitation, what are the parameters of your study? To the research methodology, what will be the design of your research? For sampling, how will you select the respondents? For data gathering method, what tool will you use in gathering the data? And how is the process? And of course, we do not forget the ethical issues. No? How will you observe privacy and confidentiality? And lastly, the data analysis. So ito po, pag makompleto nyo itong parte na ito at talagang majustify nyo sa bawat part niya na meron kayong entry dyan, it's already a way for you to start a good action research. Okay? So sige po. Huwag mo kayong maboring dito ha. Kung may katanungan, i-chat lang ninyo. Okay, I'd like to present to you the model. No much has been talked about action research, particularly sa mga taga DepEd dito. Ang dami-dami nang na-lecture about action research. But what I'd like to emphasize this time is the model. So as you can see, the model of an action research is seen as cyclical in nature. And the first step is the identification of the problem or the identification of the research problem. Moving on to that, we have the generation and analysis of data. Iisipin mo, kung ito yung problema, no? paano ko kukunin yung data? Paano ko i-generate yung data? Then, you also plan for the specific intervention or remediation. Introduce and monitor that intervention, analyze and evaluate the data, review the process, and as you can see, it's more on cyclical, pabilog siya. So for us teachers, for us educators, it reminds us that research is a way for improvement. No? So, kumbaga, wag tayong magsawa sa pag pagkakandak ng research, wag tayong magsawa sa mga yan, kasi 
in that way, we can contribute something. Okay? So, next. So, these are the steps. Itong steps na ito ay sa akin lamang. It's, it's a sharing sa inyo. No? Ako la pa ang gumawa. While I, I, I read so many literature already about action research, napakadami, napakadami. Pero sa akin, no, I devised my own. Which uh, I hope this could be a good way for you to understand also. Na gustong i-share ko rin sa inyo. So, the steps in action research. Is our, step one is problem sensing. So, napaka-basic napaka yan. Ano yung problema? Nasa sense nyo ba yung problema sa paaralan ninyo, sa institution ninyo? No? Step two is, kung, na, kung nakita mo yung problema, you already identified that specific problem. For example, absenteeism. You should also read about literature about absenteeism. No? In that way, we will be able, we will be able to understand what is new about absenteeism, what has already been discussed about absenteeism, we will be updated of the trends about absenteeism. Tung yun yung problema. For step three, okay, doon ka mag-isip ng strategy or intervention. And step four, again, identify the data sources. Step five, implementation of the intervention. Step six, gathering and identifying the findings. Step seven, drawing the conclusion and recommendation. Step eight, making the decision. Step nine, research results utilization. Step ten, assessment of the impact. Ito yung gusto kong ipa-ibigay sa inyo na idea. For those who are listening, the teachers and even professors of SUCS who are here, no, because I've been exposed that really the impact of your research is measured. By the way, how many students increase their performance in your district? No, were you able to write instructional material based on the research na kinandak niyo? Were you able to provide impact? Kasi yun yung yung nawawala, no? Kasi ang dami daming action research na nakanda pero all ng mga ito ay tinatawag natin na file drawer problem. File drawer problem. Bakit? Kung natapos na, hanggang doon na. Natapos na, na-promote ka na, nabigyan na ng points, tapos na. No? Ang gusto kong ipa, ibigay sa inyo na, na idea is, we should at least pursue the impact of your research. Kung baga, kung natapos nyo yung action research nyo na yan, dapat nyo i-publish yan. Publish it in referee journals, in international journals, because people who have the same discipline with you can also have access what have you contributed in your field. Ang pinag-uusapan na kasi natin dito is our contribution to the field, to our academic discipline. Doon tayo nakikilala. Okay? And of course, kung yun ba yung action research, ito yung result ng action research mo, nakagawa ka ng libro, nakagawa ka ng training, no na i-replicate nila yung uh, yung 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 output na yan no were you able to assess the impact so dapat din yun yung tignan natin na function ng research we must remember that research is a cyclical process imagine yung research mo na ilang buwan mo na ginawa nagpuyat ka naghirap ka noong natapos papel lang nandoon sa drawer mo wala nang silbi so dapat you should also pursue. And I'd like to tell you that you can already contribute something in your field provided that you can publish your research. You have been cited by your by other institutions, by other nationalities and it's a fulfillment on your part. Doon kayo makikilala. Okay? So I am uh, uh, talagang natutuwa ako kasi sa DepEd talagang binibigyan ng, ng, nila ng ng pansin yung publication no publication as a way to disseminate knowledge okay so yan po the steps in action research now let's move on to the problem sensing no first what are the common problems you encountered in the delivery of instruction in the new normal very common ito ang daming problema <laughs> okay even yung pag pag distribute natin ng modules even how we 
operate, how we use our learning environment management network. Kasi ang university namin, meron kaming lens. Million-million yung pinambili namin. Pero ang nakikita namin problema doon is hindi lahat ng teacher ay kayang gamitin. So how do we address these problems? So it requires action research. What are the critical and even the less critical problems? And how do you see these problems in the operation of the institution? Does it deter the, the, the smooth operation of your institution or what? So problem sensing is a way for you to identify what is really the problem. Okay, so with this, I'd like to present to you, hopefully you can generate a good action research title or action research topic done that there are also uh, problem diagnosis and gaps identification. And among the problems that can be generated are problems on classroom environment, problems on the lack of instructional materials. What can you do? What can you develop? On classroom management, even in managing the online classroom, mahirap din po. No? How, yung the way how we, we condition our students, no? yung access nila sa internet, even yung psychology of learning nila, nandoon rin ba yung enthusiasm nila na matuto? These are questions that need to be addressed. And even how do we assess students' performance and outcomes, product and performance in times of pandemic? No? Ako nga, ang experience ko, nagtuturo ako ng research, nagtuturo ako ng research sa mga estudyante ko, uh, talagang natikikita, no? alimbawa kung may mga chapters din na natatapos, talagang pinapa-screen ko yan sa blood scan para makita natin kung talaga bang may sinulat sila or kinopya lang nila. So, on our part as educators, we need to be vigilant on these things. Paano tayo magde-device ng ng solution para matulungan din natin ang ating mga estudyante para hindi rin nila tayo dinadaya no kasi yun yun yung nagiging problema natin lalo na no kung parehas parehas na na multiple choice yung pa-exam natin o nagchechatan ang mga students na mga yan so ito yung mga concern natin na how do we uh, solve these problems okay so with this i'd like to show you the considerations and personal responses you try to reflect try to retrospect what is my topic what I learn, what I want to learn from my topic. What are my plans to do in order to address this topic? No? To whom will the outcome of my study will be important? Will it help your students? Will it help your institution? How much time do you anticipate the study require, requirement, the time needed? How difficult do you anticipate it? And what are your foreseen ethical issues? So as to the problem diagnosis, I hope no, meron na kayong mga nakikitang problema na pwede ninyong i-convert, i-package into an action research proposal. Okay? So moving on, I'd like to present to you the prospects of the challenges of the COVID-19 and what is the most challenging when you teach or learn in online during COVID-19. Let's try to navigate between the possible and the impossible. No? Because my topic given is how to conduct action research in the new normal. At ang pinaka-basic na example na natin dyan is paano tayo makipag-deal sa students natin, paano tayo magturo. So these are already researchable uh, areas na pwede nating venture. Okay? So I'd like to show you this one. That there is this dichotomous thinking and decision that the, 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 the concept between online versus F2F. F2F stands for face-to-face. Which is, saan ba ang mas magandang matuto ang mga bata? Online or face-to-face? -face? Sa school ba or sa bahay? So, when you try to reflect on this, should we open the campus or ask students to study from home? What do you think? This has always been the question. Now, have you, con have you conducted an action research with regards to this? I hope marami na rin sa inyong nakapag-conduct ng mga mga concerns about this one, no? Okay. So the statements that according to ISLS statement, the impact of COVID-19 on formal schooling is that statements that a resumption of a physical schooling is necessary in order for 
students to learn is a mischaracterization of what we know about when and how meaningful learning occurs. In fact, uh, there are still debatable issues as to where the students learn better. Is it in online or in face-to-face, -face, in school or at home? So we cannot conclude, we cannot justify, but I think with regards to the different characteristics of your students, you can come up with a good action research from this problem. I am so sorry, we have foreign participant. We have foreign participant. I keep on speaking in Filipino. Sorry. Okay, so the shift is this one. What is the problem in online learning? So this could be a, a researchable area for teachers, for practicing educators. The shift from focus, what is better and what is good teaching, All right? So often, common problems in face-to-face -face classes are found in online classes, particularly on the lack of feedback and interaction. Have you conducted an action research as to the learning engagement of the students in the online and even in, with the use of modular approach or modular modality, the vague evaluation criteria, and even the way how do we, do we deliver knowledge or instruction to our students? And the essence of the problem is not whether learning takes place F2F or online, but rather the reminder for us educators is the basic principles of good teaching. How do we apply these principles? Okay, so moving on. Now, the emerging issue now is this, the transition between the old and the new. Because the new requires us to address many problems. And according to Bailak in 2006 on the signing social infrastructure, it was noted that the transition between the old and the new is also problematic as to the cultural belief dimension, as to the practice dimension, as to the socio-techno-spatial dimension, and even our interaction. I am presenting this to you so that you will have idea on what possible action research you can propose or you can pursue with regards to the process of conducting this one in the new normal. Okay, moving on. So getting from the responses, uh, these are just of the responses which can be packaged into a data, right? So the question given is, do online classes take more time to prepare? That's the question number one. And the question number two is, are F2F classes more effective than online classes? It's just a way of doing a simple survey, simple question. You can already come up with the data for you to make an action research. People who answered yes, the, does online class take more time to prepare? Yes, sabi nila, it takes a lot of time to prepare and edit, edit video lectures, which is true. On the other way around, no, it takes a lot of time to create lecture for the first time. But the time gradually decreases, it is good to reuse lectures. For question number two, are F2F classes more effective than online classes? Yes. In the F2F class, it is easy for instructors to, to interact with the students. No, in online classes, instructors can use many strategies and interact interactions similar to F2F classes. It is more convenient. Now, if you are a, an action researcher, how will you decide on this? How will you get the responses of your respondents? How, what, from, what, what remediation, what intervention will you propose? Okay, actually these are just a simple responses coming from a small number of respondents. Okay, so now, Framing the topic for your action research, this according to Sage Publication. Okay, Sage Publication is uh, a well-known journal, well-known uh, publishing body in the world, indexed in both Scopus and Web of Science. So take the advice coming from this uh, publication. Is the topic relevant and meaningful to my everyday practice? Is it natin, no? Is this relevant to us? if you are pursuing a research. Number two, do I have a strong interest or passion for the topic? Is it a topic that other educators at my grade level, school or beyond are interested in? I'd like to emphasize that the trend today is not 
on the individual research. The trend today is more on participatory research. Gone are the days that we are selfish of doing action research. Today is more on collaborative. It's more on collective enterprise. Four, is there a literature base to support the understanding of the existing knowledge of the topic or aspects of the topic? And five, am I able to develop a concise statement of the problem around my topic? So I cannot give you a definite problem because the problem is based on your experiences. See to it that you can package that into a research proposal so that you can also pursue a good action research. Okay. Now, presenting to you the variables that can affect students' learning are also researchable topics in this new normal. First, even the gender of the students. Have you ever asked who among my students, whether they are male or female, which has the higher level of learning engagement in online? Is it male or female? What about on the ethnicity? Even in the prior education, the prior learning experience of your students, even the health, no? the physical disabilities of your students, their age, the socioeconomic status, first language, learning styles, peer relationships, special talents, and even emotional health. So these are topics, these are important variables for you to pursue or for you to investigate when you talk of action research. Are these not problem of your, of your students? These are problems of your students. These are issues, okay? Next, on the online classroom variables, even in the transition times, how do we schedule the time for our students? No? Uh, were we able to assess, conduct an action research? At what time our students really learn better? Because in psychology, we have our individual inclination. Temperature and time affect our learning dispositions. No? Even the patterns of online classroom interaction. Even our online class size, no? the internet access, the pacing of subjects, the student responsibility, and even the learning activities. So, pwede nyo sigurong uh, mag-device uh, mag ng iyong sariling uh, action research topic based from these variables. Next. And for school variables, even how your principal leadership uh, uh, skill, no? even on the school culture, the budget and resources, the operation of the institution, the safe environment, even the staffing arrangement, partnership with other institutions, support programs are also researchable topics. Moving on, even the teacher's variables, the personality of the teacher, professional or content knowledge, the philosophy of education, motivation and commitment to teach, personal variables, organizational leadership skills are also issues that can be researched through an action research. Okay, pero kung gusto mo namang i-pursue into a fundamental research, then why not? All right. Okay. You have questions? Before we proceed to the next segment? Hello? Okay, okay lang po ba kayo? Okay, the topic for your action research. Example. Hi, sorry, Sir Gilbert, kindly unmute your microphone for a while. Sorry. Hello. Okay, sir, clear. Uh, sir, sorry again. Kindly unmute your microphone, please. Hello? Can I hear you again? Hello? Sir? Okay, sir. Am Can I hear you again? Yes, sir. Okay na po. Okay na. Okay. So we have foreign participant pala. I'm so sorry. So we have also, have you conducted an action research on the involvement of parents in the implementation of modular learning? You know, one of my students conducted an action research about this one. 
but you can replicate this one in other regions, in other parts of the country. A students' online learning engagement, and even the development of big books or small books for students, for pupils in the grade one in reading. These are researchable topics for a teacher to pursue. Okay, so as a way to frame your action research topics, some of the questions can be asked, how can I construct and use student feedback to improve my instruction in English? That's actually a personal question. What happens to my student's academic performance in history when I give daily quizzes on homework assignments? How does the use of computers affect students' writing process? What happens to student learning in my classroom when I use GIS to teaching geography? What happens to the reading comprehension of my students when we use systematically differentiated instruction? So these are possible questions for one. You know, I hope I was able to provide you areas or researchable topics for you to work on. Okay, so that's actually this. These are actually the questions you can do. You can frame when you you would like to come up with your action research questions. All right. Now we have we are done with identification of the problem. Let's proceed to step two, which is conducting a literature review. We have this one. Is there a literature base to support the understanding of your existing knowledge of the topic or aspects of the topic? If you would like to venture on learning styles, have you read literature about learning styles? What is new with learning styles? What is already uh, found out about learning styles? So this requires you to read a lot of literature. Though action research siya, kailangan po natin talaga ng action research ay kailangan po natin talaga ng literature review to support the variables, to support our researches. Okay? So for online technology tools, I'd like you to, to venture on this. We have number one, the Semantic Scholar. Number two, the Google Scholar. Number three, the Google Patents. Three, the Philippine E-Journals. Five, ISPS, ICPSR. And six, the Google Data Set. So this is actually the semantic scholar where you can do a literature search for your specific problem. Okay, shall we have this uh, walkthrough session? Okay, semantic scholar is a way for you to show. Okay, so what you can see in the screen is the semantic scholar. Now, suppose that you are interested to conduct research on the learning styles. What is good with semantic scholar is it presents to you thousands of literature, thousands of references about a topic. So suppose that you would like to do a study on the learning styles, click learning styles, then click search. Okay. So from that result, imagine from that semantic scholar, you talk about learning style because learning style is your variable in your study. It has 3,950,000 references. Okay. And what is good with this semantic scholar is it has this field of study option because you can look, uh, you can click on psychology here, what is specific topic. You can also range the data. What is good with Semantic Scholar is it presents you last 10 years from 2021. Nakikita po ba ako? For the last five years or this year. So what is acceptable for us is for the last 10 years. So i-click mo siya. The Semantic Scholar can generate the data. So as you sorted it, you have 565,000 literature about learning styles. So, impossible dyan na hindi ka pa makakakuha ng, ng study mo, ng, ng literature mo. So, yung, those who said a while back that RRL is a problem in action research, not anymore. Because you have already these smart tools to help you facilitate to this uh, literature review. 
All you have to do is just get the keyword and go to Semantic Scholar, presto. The data is already available. All right. And even you can select the author here and even the, the what kind of publication. Is it a journal article? Is it a conference, a review, a book, a letter and comments? Is it an editorial, a case report, or a clinical trial? And what is good with this is you can even sort the paper based on the relevance. Okay? Because paper in journals are sorted based on the number of citation counts. So based on the relevance, based on the citation counts, based on how influential the paper, and based on the sort of the recency. Now, what I would like you to tell is that in your action research, if you are struggling to search for liter literature review, I suggest that get at least 10 latest literature about the topic, sampo, no? and read it, read it. And get also papers that are highly cited from that topic. Okay. In fact, I have done a study on learning styles. And let's try to look at this one. If it yields a result of my research. So in Semantic Scholar, it says that I have 16 publications with 46 citations. And the learning styles, okay, it's, it's already here. I have 15 citations here. So if this is the paper, then get it. Get it. It's a good reference. And all the rest are uh, articles. Okay. Uh, other one is I have also authored a, an article on the use of technology tools in ensuring quality of journal publications. So you can download this one. It's free. It's in open access. Uh, it's a good uh, reference for you to, to read and as well as get the tips I presented here, we presented here on how to publish your research or even your action research. Okay, so that's how you can use the Semantic Scholar. The other one is the Google Scholar. Okay, so if this is the Google Scholar, this one, so this is not new to you. Everyone is uh, already abreast with this, Google Scholar. You type learning styles, what is specific a problem there about learning styles. And what is good with this Google Scholar is you can sort the articles. You can sort it from 2021, from 2020, from 2017 to present. And even you can custom uh, uh, sort it from, let's say, 2010 to 2021 and click here, okay? So as you can see, it shows that from 2010 to 2021, you have 1,810,000 results about learning styles. What I would like you to tell is, if this is the literature for your research, and if you are venturing on the topic of learning styles, you are already provided with so many references about learning styles. But the gap there is, since you have different students coming from uh, different regions and geography, of course, they have different uh, learning styles. And that's how you will come up with a good recommendation or conclusion later on. Okay? So, nakakaintindihan po ba tayo? The other one is the use of Google Patent. Okay. If some of you are interested to to do a research on in developing instructional materials for students, I'd like you to go to the Google Patents. No, in the in our university, when we would like to have patent or utility model of our developed tools coming from our researches, we usually we usually go to Google Patents for us to understand Ano na yung mga natapos or nagawa to that particular uh, area? So, uh, for example, you would like to, to develop, you found out that the problem in your institution or in your school is there are so many students who are non-readers and you would like to come up with a reading pen. 
Okay? So, if you are a researcher, a teacher, at you would like to develop and design a reading pen for your students, of course, the, 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 the experience there is you would like to enhance or to, to improve the reading skill of the students, reading pen is a good intervention. So, go and consult Google, Google Patent and see to it what has been conducted about this topic. So, we have that reading pen. Okay, out of that, we have 135,829 results. And here, you can download it. You can develop a concept or uh, get the design and improve it for yourself. Okay, so dito sa side, you can have the date, the name of the inventor, the assignee, or even in the patent office. In the Philippines, kung P Philippines lang, then go to PH here. Dito sa side niya. Okay? So, now, the suggestion here is when you use Google Patents, see to it that you are venturing in the design and development of, for example, tactual learning material for elementary pupils, tactual learning material for the, the uh, physically challenged students of your school. So, you go also to Google Patents and consult there. Okay? So, let's try to move. Marami pa tayong pag-uusapan. Okay, so I'm done with presenting Google Scholar. Another one is go also to ICPSR. What is good with ICPSR is a database for everyone that is available wherein you can get studies conducted in United States. That is, if you would like to have an international context of your study. Because sabi nyo kanina, RRL is a problem. Review of the related literature is a problem. And if you would like your research to be published internationally, it's important also to cite references abroad. And if you would like your reaction research to be regarded uh, its international, international dimension, Get also questionnaire coming from foreign uh, authors, but see to it that it will be protested in your own country or in your own location. So there's no problem with it. The other one is a data search, data set search. Another one, for example, you would like to find out what is the problem with regards to the performance of Filipino students in reading compared to other countries. Okay, you can generate data. Makikita mo doon kung nasaan na tayo. Okay, hindi ko kasi maiwasan ang hindi mag-Tagalog, mag-Pilipino. <laughs> okay, so data set, search, go to data search. Okay, the other one is a free online digital education resource archive of DERA of the Institute of Education in UCLA. So medyo nagle-level up ang ating level, no? Uh, pwede niyong isight kuha ng mga references here about what are the newly developed tools with regards to students' study habits. No? So you can actually develop a research from this uh, uh, database. Actually, uh, the suggestion there is if chapter 2 is the Literature review part of your action research, I suggest that you must have at least a review literature. A, a review literature is an article written by authors with 200, written with 200, uh, uh, a review article that synthesized 200 to 250 articles about a topic, about learning styles, about absenteeism, about reading comprehension, and so on. So at least kahit dalawa o apat na literature review article ang pwede niyong kunin nang sa ganon is may strong grounding ang action research ninyo. No? Imagine you are doing a research without any knowledge of what is new of the topic. What I would like to tell to you, my dear listening teachers and professors here is that if you are venturing to a particular topic or a variable, are you that familiar of what is new with the topic? 
what has not been found about the topic and what has been found about the topic. In short, if you do not have a, a review literature, you are innocent. Lalong lalo na naman, no? innocent tayo sa pagconduct ng research, which is hindi dapat mangyari yon sa atin. Okay? So, may tumatawag, pasit siya na. So, these are actually examples on how you can venture the Google Scholar. So, sabi ko kanina, as what I have said, uh, you must have at least review articles for your literature review. So, learning styles, review article. Just click, for example, fisheries review articles. So, we have 10, 1 million and 10,000 results. Okay? So, it's just on your capacity on what specific literature you can get. Hindi na po mahirap ngayon ang pagre-research. Now, I like also to introduce to you the use of the Philippine e-journal. Now, the Philippine e-journal is a database of all uh, published articles in the Philippines and so, most of the studies pub, uh, indexed in these Philippine e-journals are studies conducted in the Philippines. Okay, let's try to navigate this one. How does this Philippine e-journal works? Okay. So, okay lang po ba kayo? Okay lang po ba kayo? Okay, we are now proceeding to the navigation of the Philippine e-journal. Okay. Can you see it? Yes, sir. You can see it, sir. Okay. So this is the Philippine e-journal. It is very common for us. For example, you would like to, to do a research on the mathematics learning of students in the Philippines. Just click the keyword mathematics learning there. And it shows that we have the journals. We have 11 journals who talk about uh, mathematics learning. We have 1,287 articles. And when you go to the article level, here are the examples here. All right. So emotional quotient, mental toughness, mathematics, anxiety, performance of teacher education students, a prediction model for the word, pro word problem solving pro performance, determining factor in mathematics achievement, strategies to re reduce pathological fear in mathematics, right? Learning environment, parental involvement towards math. So you have so many references that can be taken out from this database alone. And what is good with this, it, it presents to you better way of citing the references. So just click on that article title and you, uh, click on the citation generator. So you have guidelines there in your action research guides for particularly for DepEd, what is specific uh, citation format you will use in your action research. So we have the APA, we have the MLA or Turabian. So we have the APA, click APA, then generate. Very easy. Just copy the title of the research, copy that to the word, to the MS word, presto. You were able to have your own data. You were able to have your own reference. Okay? So that is how Philippine e-journal works. Okay, so now this is my takeaway for everyone. See to it that when you conduct an action research, you must have at least develop your literature matrix. What is this literature matrix? A matrix wherein you have the list of your references and the year and the variables. I'd like to show you one output of my student who is enrolled in my subject. So Pakita ko na lang tong sample. Form 2, uh, because every time they do research with me, I really require them to do a literature gap review matrix to fill out this uh, pro forma. So the approved research title of my student is 
abot kamay ang pagsasanay. Development, utilization, and effectiveness of tactile learning kit for grade one mathematics. Then I provided there the 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 directions. Use Google Scholar reference. No, depende na rin yan sa ating na teacher kung ano yung gusto natin ipagawa sa ating mga estudyante. Ino pi na tutulungan natin sila kung paano gumawa ng research. So, my students were required to download at least twenty. able to download this one. This is actually a, a sample. So we have here the year. We have here the year, here. Year column, we have the author research title, the purpose and objective of the study, the research design, the sample, the instrument, the result, the implication, and recommendation for future research direction. So with that, my students were able to get 20 articles. And it's an option for them to read what is all about the topic they are venturing. Because we cannot afford our students to do research without any knowledge about the topic. So in fact, we, we, we I just do not uh, let them cite references kung saan saan kinukuha. No? If we want to intellectualize, if we want to, to improve the research skill of our students, Get references from Scopus. Get references from Clarivate Analytics. Get references from Asian Citation Index journals published within 2010 to 2021. And this is actually a practice for Malaysian students, Malaysian professors of research, right? So with this, my students were able to synthesize and find out what is new about the topic. Okay, so I hope you can get this as a takeaway, particularly when you when you teach research. Hindi hindi na rin kayo mahirapan dyan eh. For example, 10 references coming from international uh, authors. 10 references coming from the local authors. Use the Philippine e-journal. Okay, so actually it's a way to develop the research skill of, the, of our students. And for us educators, let's try to practice this one. No, let's try to develop this habit when we do research. At least you have this uh, literature review matrix. In other countries, I'd like to tell you this one that particularly Malaysia. No, Malaysia is so far from Philippines in terms of intellectual capital, in terms of research, in terms of this uh, capacity, human intellectual capacity, because lahat, they can publish that before a graduate student in Malaysia can defend his or her thesis or dissertation, that student should publish the literature review of his or her research or dissertation. Why? Because simple. How can one become expert of the field if you are not familiar with the topic, topic you are venturing with? So very simple. So for our students, let's do this as a practice and even in writing our action research. Even just a simple intervention, lahat naman yan ay may literature review. Lahat naman yan ay may, may nag-study na. No? May nag-study na na previous sa atin. Okay? So this is actually a literature review matrix. So kung tayo naman ay hindi masyadong teki at tayo ay masino actually we can print the references and categorize this one put that in the folder we call this as a bibli uh, uh, bibliographic entries if we have three problems in our action research or four statement of the problems what is the level of attitude of the students? Is there a significant difference on the attitude of the students when group according to their profile variables? Is there a relationship between the attitude of the students using this intervention in relation to their academic performance? Kung apat yung statement of the problem mo, apat din yung folder mo, at sa bawat folder na yon, nandoon yung mga references. It's good to note that this article is good to justify statement problem number one. 
This article is good to justify statement problem number two, statement problem number three, and so on. So if we are researchers, let's try to be organized that way. Our action research will not become good research if we do not have good literature review. Take note of this. And in action research, you can already generate there through these uh, online platforms. You can already generate the theoretical framework of your study. You can already generate the conceptual framework of your study and everything. So tanungin ko sa inyo, mahirap ba? Hindi po. Mas madali na po ang buhay natin ngayon na educators. Because of these technologies in the new normal, let's try to practice all of this one. Okay, now, marami pa akong sasabihin. We have the development of a strategy or intervention. If one is interested to implement an intervention as a research topic, remediation and intervention are two different concepts. So some of you can do remediation, some of you can do intervention. For, for us teachers, we only do remediation if this is the thing. If majority of our students were not able to grasp the concept we taught. And the whole group really uh, is not really performing. Because we already taught the concept to them and yet still they are not really performing. We need to do remediation. So a remediation can also be uh, an action research topic. And the other one is the intervention on how you will implement a certain intervention to improve the speaking skill of the students, the writing skill of the students, their mathematics learning skills, their listening skills, and so on. Now, napakaraming skills as reflected in our uh, competencies, the list of competencies sa DepEd you can already develop an intervention, okay? Then with that, it's up to you if you will pursue a strategy or a remediation or an intervention for your action research. I cannot tell you a definite intervention or a remediation because we have different disciplines here. I'm just presenting to you that these remediation or intervention are option for you to conduct an action research. Uh, siguro, Gusto kong may magtanong ngayon para para kwan para para we can address. You have questions please. Para hindi lang po nagbumukang ako lang yung nagsasalita. <laughs> you have questions? Uh, may I ask the facilitator please before we proceed to the other part. Okay, well, there are online questions here. Thank you for sharing your expertise in action research. Please provide a soft copy. Actually, meron po akong pabaon mamaya sa inyo, the soft copy of this presentation and an ebook about action research. Ebook siya. Ibibigay ko po sa facilitator siya na lang po ang mag magbigay sa inyo para meron po kayong uh, reference later. Okay, moving on. So, as we det are determined about the literature review, isipin rin natin what are the action research ethics we have. Uh, this is not new to you. This is already discussed many times for us, uh, sa inyong mga deputy teachers, very common na. But what I'd like to present is the action research ethics for teachers from Carlson in 1989. In fact, Carlson noted three action research ethics for teachers. Because with teachers, most of our respondents are students. So the ethics of hope. Our action research should be motivated by making our school to improve, making our students better, making our institutions better. So that's actually the ethics of hope. Okay. We have also the ethics of caring, that our action research must serve its purpose, and the ethics of responsibility. We are teachers, we are professionals, we are educators, and we must look at the welfare of our students. Particularly at this time, we have the Data Privacy Act. It's just a rem reminder for every one of us that just getting a simple data coming from our students, even their age, parents' education, family monthly income, these are critical data. We generate and we can be sued to court 
no we can be imprisoned if we do not have the proper uh proper ethics proper protocols okay so child research ethics involvement is very important particularly if our respondents are below 18 no below 18 ang mga respondents yung definition sa batas kasi below 18 ay bata child okay so we need to observe this one data privacy and protection have we asked the parents to do to give us the consent for the elementary learners i require this to my students that before they can get the profile of these students they need to seek first the informed consent from parents okay very critical po though we have the power yung sabi nila dati na the more power the more responsibility the higher our accountability then action research ethical review if we have the ethics board in our institution i hope that in your school you have your established ethics board the ethics board is composed of the principal composed of the parents composed of the teacher a representative from the, the students because before a research study will be approved you the, 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 you it needs to pass the scrutiny of the ethics board okay and of course the ethical requirement for our action research all of these are reminders for us okay if you have question please uh, uh write your question in the in the chat button button of the zoom Hello. Hey, sir, good afternoon good afternoon yeah. okay we actually have several questions already appearing in the chat function and also in youtube but I don't know if the presentation is already done since we still have the open forum part later on. Uh, okay. I don't know with you, sir. But okay. we actually have many questions already available. I don't know if you if you are at ease and if you're ready to answer it. Okay, sir. Okay, I, I, I'll just finish the presentation, please. And I will answer the questions afterwards. Okay? okay so I'm asking you, for a question. Hindi ko kasi namamalayan. Okay. Now... After finishing the research ethics, you think also of your research methodology, action research methodology. So, sabi nyo kanina, you, you, you struggle with the, what specific design will you use in your research? What specific uh, uh, design or method will you use? Research methodology is a method that explains what you did and how you did it. See to it that when you have this research methodology, it should always pass the reliability and validity. Okay? It should include the type of research you did, how will you collect the data, how will you analyze the data, and any tools or materials you use in the research or the rationale for choosing these methods. I'd like to tell you this one. We just do not only do a literature review about the variables of your research, but we also do a literature review about the method. And for we call it as review methodology. Why? This is very good to understand. If you will be using a specific method in your research, how many articles have you read about that method? And it's a requirement kung sa klase ko, requirement yan eh, sa aking mga estudyante na gagamit po ako ng pre-test, post-test, sir. I will be using uh, correlational survey, sir. I will be using cross-sectional survey, sir. Well, if you will be using this method, at least show to me at least 10 references or articles about that method. And I require my students to do a review of the methodology. You know why? The very basic reason is we just need not to follow the methodology written in the article, but we need also to know how the method will be conducted, what are the weaknesses of the method, what are the strengths of the method, what are the limitations of the method. And you can only get this one by reviewing a literature about that method. So it's a good advice. Siguro, pwede niyong gabitin yun. Kung gagamit po kayo ng pre-test, post-test, well, at least 10 articles 
about this pretest post test method. If you will be using true experimental research design, at least 10 articles about this one. So that we are not just only uh, following what others are writing, but we need also to be critical of the method. Method. Okay. So a reminder, we just do not only do literature review in the literature review section, but we also do a review on the research methodology. Okay, so in your research methodology, it's just a reminder how to cook rice. It's just like how you were able to gather your data. And in a sequential way, you state it that way. You know, the first process I did in gathering the data, the second process, the third process, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth process. And you think in that way that it makes the credibility of the research if you have a very strong research methodology. And most of the researches, because I do review of uh, many publish, uh, publishable articles, I usually venture on the research method. And a good quality of a research method is that it can be replicated. It can be replicated. It can be replicated in the sense that in the way that the author or the researcher is stating the method used in the study, it can be easily followed. And you can already find out where will be the loopholes, where will be the problems. Okay, next. So this is just a process of cooking rice. Now we have here the process of collecting data in the new normal. So can you do experiment? You can do, you can do interview, FGD, but most of these are through online. But for action research, for you to make a very good data for your action research, I suggest that you use mixed method. But if, uh, if talagang hindi kaya, then any of these, as long as you can justify the strengths of that research methodology. Okay? So in the new normal, we are bombarded with the problem, how do we really conduct, how do we really gather data from our respondents? Mostly, you can use online survey, dami-dami namang mga online survey tools dyan, online observations, or documentary analysis. Okay, so this is just a reminder. We will not talk much of this, but it's just a reminder that your methodology in your research, in your action research can be quantitative method, can be qualitative, or can be mixed method. You know all of this. I will not uh, talk much on this now. Okay, so in action research data, for data gathering, we have the three is, first, experiencing, second, inquiring, third, examining. On these three is of action research data collection techniques, experiencing through observation and field notes, we are hampered due to pandemic. So how do we do participant observation? How do we do face-to-face uh, -face observation? Of course, uh, with the aid of technology, you can even use online. Pero if you are capable enough, uh, just follow the... IATF protocols, you can, you can pursue with this. For inquiring, when the researcher asks informal interview, a structured formal interview, questionnaire, attitude, a standardized test, attitude test, and for examining using records, archival documents, journals, maps, audio, videotapes, artifacts, field notes are also collection techniques, data action research collection techniques in conducting your action research. Okay, so next. So these are also the common methods used when you do action research, regular meetings, observation of teachers, questionnaire with teachers and children, interview with teachers and children, classroom observation, documentary analysis, journals, interviews, portfolios, field notes, audio tapes, photos, memos, focus group, anecdotal records, case studies, rubrics, pre-test and post-test results, standardized test scores, or even self-evaluation are good tools for your action research. Okay? 
Moving on. Now, in the research methodologies for COVID-19 pandemic, these are the trend. We have netnography. You use virtual or digital online gathering of data. You use online interviews, online FGDs through Zoom, mobile methods, diaries of the students, photo video or voice elicitation, videos for ethnographic or bioblogging, arts-based research or story completion, for semi-quanti and quantitative research, they have these online and phone surveys, digital methods, big data, social media analysis, spatial analysis, social simulation, expert elicitation. So some of these are the common uh, research methodologies in this COVID-19. I hope that uh, you can use some of this. As to the individual description of these methods, please do individual uh, discovery na lang, okay? Because our time is limited. Moving on. Now, the forms of hybrid learning, which I, I'd like to present this one, that in the classroom, this is actually what you can see in the screen are the pictures of the classroom in University of Korea. We're in, this is actually how they do the hybrid, hybrid learning, no, yung blended learning nila. So look at the classroom. Uh, they try to consider three things here. We have the pedagogy, the choice for the students, and the students choose a mode to learn. Whether the students can go online or the students can go face-to-face. -face. As to space, the, the school uh, were provided with new lecture room designed to support hybrid learning. No? Do we have a smart classroom in, in our country already? A smart classroom, a classroom equipped with all the facilities like this one. And technology, embed, embedding tools for monitoring online tools, of online students, and even the interaction. You can also conduct an action research as to these uh, major key terms on the pedagogy, on the space, and on the technology. And how will you able to orchestrate the use of online and face-to-face -face students. So mag-propose po kayo ng smart classroom sa mga funding agencies like Department of Science and Technology. You propose a program and they will give us funds for that. Okay, next. So as to the space, uh, even the best technological, I'd like to emphasize this one. This is a research finding. Swat Sent Taller in 2010 said that there is a high relationship between the architectural design and the interaction of the students. So in online classroom, how do we design the spacing of our students? And how do these students interact? So even the best technological or the pedagogical ideas cannot be used to their full effect if they are not architecturally integrated into the classroom. So come up with an action research on how you could integrate these things. And this eventually will lead us to better discoveries of the learning inclinations of our students. Moving on. So other forms of data gathering in the new normal is, you know, you can also use the FB online polls. I just do not know if you, if you have already used this one. But what is good in Facebook is you can already create a poll in my class, I have this uh, I have this private group chat, private group page for my students, and there I usually post question, and students will give me responses. The students can even vote for a particular uh, topic based on their needs, whatever practical or strategic needs na in address. So, uh, for example, what what part of the research article writing do you face with difficulty? Okay, so it shows that from the survey I conducted, many uh, educators are not really uh, uh, find results and discussion as their weakness in conducting research, in writing action research. So you can use this one. These are already uh, tools that you can use that will aid you to conduct an action research, right? Another one, you can use the Padlet. For example, 
if an, an English teacher would like to explore the writing skill of the students, why not use this tool, the Padlet? The students can give you their responses. They can give you pictures. They can give you photo voice for you to generate as data of your research. So, marami ng mga te online technology tools we can use to support to support the conduct of a better learning and the conduct of action research. The other one is Slido, which we used a while back. This is already common to all of you. In fact, if you go to the literature to Google Scholar, there are so many action researches conducted on the use of Slido in teaching science, in teaching mathematics, in teaching uh, languages, foreign languages. And you know, the, the thing there is Slido is a way to increase the students' learning engagement in a particular subject. So for Filipino learners, what is the effect of Slido in the subject? So come, you can come up with a research about this one. Okay, next, even the Mentimeter to check a student's understanding. Why not get the data from this uh, Mentimeter to support your data results, to, re to support the findings of your research? Okay. Uh, do we have a question here? Okay, now, another one is Jamboard. You know, these are already tools that can be used for you to gather responses from students, particularly in English, in writing. The students can brainstorm. The students' level of brainstorming is skill. The students' level of writing is skill. No? Agad, agad na na-generate mo na yung mga data from that. It's a way for you as a teacher kung pa paano mo siya gamitin. Even the forms of hybrid learning, the use of platforms in creative ways, the photo voice, the pictures, right? And I'd like to show you some methods of action research in the new normal, which is an action research. Uh, this is an example of a research study. Coping mechanism of students during COVID-19 pandemic insights from the photo voice research, photo voice based research. So the method used here is a photo voice. Photo voice is a methodology developed by Caroline Wong and is based on training bodies. So Paulo Freire's pedagogy, feminism, and visual research. Now, photo voice serves as a platform for learners or community members to share their lived experiences of dealing with difficulties and problems. Together with their unique assets and knowledge within a dialogic, dialog dialogical group space that enables participants to feel empowered, identifies community needs, and promote change processes. Okay, so some of this, uh, I'd like to show you example is this one. So the students were asked to, to compare what uh, they are in now, what they have felt, with, that, with this COVID-19 and how it affected their mental health. So, yung researcher, pinapicture niya yung mga bata paki ng kanilang mga nararamdaman in their situation using a photo voice. And example is this one. Figure two, figure two, nagpicture siya ng uh, dumbbell. Okay, it's, 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 it's yung, yung weightlifting tool. So, the student, noted here it's heavy for us and the voice through a narrative goes this way i took the picture of my parents house where, where, where i am staying after leaving my student apartment near the college following the closure and transition to an online routine i feel my free time working with the weights i choose to photograph the weights because that symbolizes the heavy fears that have arisen in me during this period it's not only about the situation of the whole world and the country and the sense of our tendency. So you can get data coming from this through a photo voice. The other one is a photograph by Hila, and it's a breaking point coronavirus as crisis coping situation. This is the voice narrative. This week, I went for a run in a nature reserve near my house. Amidst all the greenery and blooming, blooming flowers, I came across a tree that had been broken during the storms of last winter. 
and it filled me with a deep sense of sadness. The broken tree symbolizes the situation of a family that I am working with in my practical trading. This week, I spoke with the father of the family who said, I try, but I feel that I am about to break down. So this is a data, a method using a photo voice. And you know you can generate the, the, the responses coming from students. It's up for them. No, it's up for them. And it's up to you as a researcher on how you analyze this one. So again, a, a reminder is when you gather data, see to it that in the new normal, no group gathering, strict observance of IATF protocols, the wearing of PPEs, and recording of travel histories are needed. Okay, so I'd like to show you this one, the some of the practices. I have this student who conducted a research on the, the tactile learning kit for grade one math. So my student developed a learning tool and he, he has the sexy title, Abot Kamay Ang Pagsasanay. Development, Utilization, and Effectiveness of Tactual Learning Kit for Grade 1 Mathematics. And the method of gathering is face-to-face uh, -face, but individual student. So it, this is for the basic education level. So the research design was the one-group pretest post-test. So another one is this one. A student of mine conducted a study on the development and effectiveness of most essential learning competency-based learning activity shifts to the performance of grade six pupils in math. Then uh, he was able to gather data through face-to-face -face with the uh, observance of IATF protocols. So ganun din naman sa atin, sa, sa mga teachers natin sa DepEd. Okay, so some of the practices. Another student of mine conducted parent literacy practices during COVID-19 with the implementation of modular learning. So parents, yung kanyang kinuhang respondents, so nag-survey siya, as you can see in the picture. Then, of course, some of the practice of my students here is really face-to-face -face and the use of online data gathering. Okay, so this one. So in the new normal, when you use questionnaire, you can also use mail survey, online survey, or phone survey. And there are so other tools. No, there are many tools you can use. So some of this is, kung the, 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 I'd like to, to emphasize this one. We do not expect that when we gather data, all of our students can have access to online because of their limitations. Particularly our students, yung mga kwan, wala namang cellphone ang mga yan. So you have nothing to do, kundi puntahan mo sila, go to their area. So that's one of the limitations of online survey. So now, if if see to it, because uh, if you would like to do an action research, particularly that your respondents are your students, see to it that they have this common platform. At kung lahat naman ay may access sa internet, may access sa Facebook, may access sa, sa my computer sila, then you can use online survey. So you can use that form. You create a form. This is already common. You use this when you develop quizzes for your students. You use the Google Forms and all of this. Okay. Now, what about if your research is quantitative? Quantitative, you, you will use interviews or focus group discussion. You can also do Zoom interviews or phone interviews or group interviews. But may I remind you this one that describe where, when, and how the interview will be conducted. And how did you find and select the participants is also very important. How many people took part in your research, in your action research? What form did the interviews uh, use? Is structured, semi-structured, or unstructured? And how long were the interviews and how they were recorded? See to it that if you use online focus group discussion, an interview or discussion is carried out by an expert moderator in a natural manner with a small group of respondents. But if you would like to do an, a depth interview so that you can gain more insights, go directly, personal, uh, conduct personal interview with the respondents so that you can get the solution to that problem of inquiry, to that action research problem. Okay? So again, malapit na tayo. 
this is also an example uh, the use of participant observation if you are capable to do participant observation then you must have at least camera you must have at least uh, uh, be audiovisual recordings and photo ethnography is also a trend today because uh, what the researchers are doing is the researcher get uh, gets pictures of behaviors and attitudes of individuals and in that way they are able to to explain to interrogate from that picture and the pick what is all about the the problem or what is the 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 emerging problem in their community so photo voice or we call it as photo ethnography so as to the quantitative method how you will prepare the data before right now uh for quantitative particularly surveys this is a, a tip for everyone that if you have 11 respondents or let's say 11 respondents or sample sample respondents wag mong saktuhin na 11 ang respondents mo pwedeng gawin mo yang 12 kasi pag hindi mo ma-reach yung isang respondent na identified mo sa 11 hindi mo talaga makukuha yung number of respondents mo so kaya meron kayong tinatawag na extra so if you identified the number of your samples 20 gawin mong 21 para meron kang extra. Ganon din sa experimental research. And you write, what software will you use, SPSS or Stata? Uh, the concern on the statistics in action research, it does not really require you to use the higher level of the statistics for your action research. But the thing there is, you can even consult your statistician. Hindi naman problema po yun eh. Pero kung mean, median, frequency, standard deviation lang naman ang kukunin ninyo sa action research ninyo, madali na lang naman yun. Okay? And of course, kung higher level yung action research mo talagang gusto mong very ambitious ka, gagamit ka ng regression analysis, so see to it that you can really utilize it properly. Of course, for qualitative research, this one, so you can have the other methods like content analysis, coding the responses, narrative analysis or storytelling structures, and even discourse analysis, looking at the communication and meaning in relation to the social context. So actually, uh, you can even use two or more research methods or research uh, designs or even research method techniques in one action research. Depende na yan kung paano siya mag-supplement sa, sa, sa problem mo so that you can address the concern. Okay? So, why do you evaluate the methodology? See to it that you explain why you choose this particular method. That's very easy. That's very basic. And your methodology should suit to your objectives. Yun lang naman eh. Marami na kayong natutunan about this. Alam nyo na alam nyo na ito. Pero a reminder lang that your objectives of the study should match with the methods of your research. Okay? And you can acknowledge also the limitations or weaknesses in your approach and justify why these were outweighed by the strengths. Okay? You know, a good research must have a good, strong methodology. Hindi ka po maka-question. Ang ang nakakatakot po kasi is kung mali po ang research methodology natin, doon tayo naka-question kasi imagine, we arrive at certain findings, we arrive at certain conclusion and recommendation and yet we use a wrong methodology. So we just wasted the time. So see to it that uh, we were able, we are capable to use a good methodology for our action research. And of course, Okay. Now, uh, meron tayong kwan, malapit na po tayo. So for action research, this is very common. No, For experimental research, the aim is to find the cause and effect relationship between variables. It is considered the most prestigious method of advancing scientific knowledge. And most of the experimental research are on agriculture, forestry, fishery, biology, and other, other, other natural sciences. And for education, for behavioral sciences. So we have here examples. Number two, effectiveness of mind mapping strategy in the writing skills of the students. So 
we use experimental research here. Okay, pero ang reminder lang po kasi natin, kasi kung gagamit tayo ng experimental, we have this control group and we have this experimental group. And I'd like to, the most common tool, the most common research design for, for action research, particularly in basic education, is the use of the one group pretest post test. So if you have one group, a grade three, Pupils, first year students, third year high school, and they only belong to a group, group A, you can do a research using the design of one group pretest post test. So this type of research design is the most often utilized in behavioral researches to determine the effect of a treatment or an intervention on a given sample. So as you can see in the figure, we have the group A, we have pretest, treatment, post test, time. The time is very important variable when we do group tests, pretest and post test. You know why? It determines how effective the intervention. So when we are initiating an intervention to a group of learners, particularly the use of mind mapping to enhance the students' uh, speaking or writing skill, tinitignan natin ilan Ilang weeks ang intervention mo? One week ba? Two weeks ba? So the time is very important. Because you also get their attitude, their pre-test, post-test scores. And what is also notable here is when we do a pre-test and post-test, see to it that your respondents have are in normal distribution. Oh, take, oh, take this as an example, how will you tell that a fertilizer is effective in your, in your garden or in your plant if previously meron nang nailagay na fertilizer doon? So to tell whether your specific intervention is effective, you need to first establish the normality. Lahat ba ng respondents mo ay pare-parehas ang kalidad, pare-parehas ang level of attitude, pare-parehas ang level of ability. So if you are saying that your students are weak in a particular uh, skill or competency, see to it that they all have the same level of weakness before you implement an intervention. Because if not, wrong lang din po ang magigenerate natin na result. Even we use the Cohen, even we use the effect size, no? see to it that we establish first the normality of our data. Okay? Alam na po nyo yun. And another one is a true experimental research design, which is the use of the pretest, post-test control group design. So, Kerlinger, who is a proponent of action research, said that True experimental research refers to a good design. Why? Because you have your treatment group and you have your control group. You administer a pretest and you compare the, the groups and you can even find the relationship of the attitude or the performance of the students. So this is the most common. Uh, pero depende na rin po sa inyo kung ano yung gagamitin yung research design. Nasa inyo lang din na researcher kung ano yung gagamitin. But if you want that your research is something that has bearing, something that has uh, quality, why you need to use the pretest, post-test control group design. Okay? So next, in determining the sample size, how many respondents will I use in my study? If, is this a question? So your population is a complete set of all possible numerical quantitative responses, and you have the sample. If these are your population, this will be your samples. Sample is a set of responses or observation taken from the population. It aims to estimate or identify the character characteristics. And we have your sample size, the number of elements in the sample set. This is actually the, the question, no? Uh, kung sila yung sample size mo at experimental yung gagamitin mo, 
lahat ba sila eh total representation ng population? No, lahat ba sila eh uh, do they belong really in a group na parehas yung kanilang characteristics? Okay, so it's a one it's one way to establish the effectiveness of an intervention. So this might be the question, how many respondents do I need? How many respondents can I afford to get? So you have this one, a required sample size when you talk of uh, statistics. No, para hindi tayo ma-question sa representation ng pan natin. So pwede niyong tignan itong margin of error dito, the population size, the margin of error, and the confidence. But usually use the confidence level of 95%. So for example, we have uh, 3,500, and you use the 2.5 or 95% level of confidence, you will have 1,176. So, so ito sa mga statistician, no? I am not an statistician. <laughs> I'm just a researcher, okay? So the other one is, if you are not certain, at you are not, uh, you are not uh, very familiar with the use of this reference, yung... Uh, yung kwan natin, required sample size, you can use also the online sampling size using Rouso. And the Rouso is a sample size calculator. Okay? So, you just set here the margin of error, 5%, the confidence level, 95%, and the population size of 2,000, and the distribution level. Okay, uh, you can e also consult Dr. Kevinko, who is a mathematician and a statistician who graduated abroad. Okay, he can share much on this when you talk of statistics. So what I am presenting to you is there are tools also that are, are available for you to identify the sample size of your respondents. Okay, so you can use Rouso. And as to the statistical and practical significance, ito na yung tanong karina, if do you have hypothesis in your action research? There is. There is a hypothesis. It depends on you. So we have the statistical significance means the difference is real and not just due to sampling variability or chance. Uh, practical significance addresses whether the difference is important. So it's a magnitude of the difference large, to, uh, large enough to be used clinically so as to warrant change in the operating procedure. An expert in, in statistics would even say, so what if the male students are better in, in, in reading and the female students are not? So what? Will you change the gender or the sex of the respondents? That's actually the technical question. But as to the practical significance, if I am the teacher and I found out that my students uh, spelled significant difference on their performance in reading, that female students are better than the male, then for me as a teacher, the practical significance there is I will devote much more time to do remediation to these male students or female students who are weak in this particular uh, competency. So, you know, the essence of an action research is doon sa practical significance po niya. So, it doesn't matter whether your students are old or kung may significant difference sa mga yan, pero ang nakikita natin is how do we uh, give intervention that are addressing their needs? And that's one way also to address or to initiate change in our educational system. So, ito yung sabi ko kanina, is it, it a significant difference? Example, reject the null hypothesis means the difference in groupings are not likely due to sampling error. No, for example, men and women have different average IQs. So you get the practical significance aside from that statistical significance. Okay po. So ito yung practical significance niya. No? Are the differences between samples big enough to have real meaning? Although men and women undoubtedly have different IQs, is that difference large enough to have some practical implication? So and of course, malapit na po tayo. Uh, the fifth edition of the APA or publication manual states that it is almost always necessary to include some index or effect size or the strengths of relationship in your result sections. The general principle to be followed is to provide the reader not only with information about statistical significance, 
but also with enough information to assess the magnitude of the observed effect or the relationship. So particularly for those who are carrying out experimental research. So you need to look at the effect size of the intervention and you can compute that using Cohen's the effect. As to the survey ethics, we know all about this one. Be honest with our dealings. The pandemic, uh, we need to be honest. Uh, be clear and concise about our introduction. Our respondents must have informed consent form. Use the information collected for the intended purpose of the study. And aware of the socio-cultural and social differences relating to the topic. Obtain the consent of parent or guardian before collecting survey or information from minors. Then, uh, you know about sampling technique. So, pasadahan lang natin bago tayo matapos. So, sampling is how you will get the appropriate respondents in your study. So, katulad yan ng kwan, kung mag magbenta kayo ng palay, tinutusok yung palay. Kumukuha sila ng sampot. So, see to it that if you have this, uh, this population, the sample is the representation of the whole population. A sample is drawn from the population. Why? Because it has less time consuming and economical to work with samples than the population. Kung kaya mong makuha yung actual responses ng sampo kesa sa 100, doon ka na lang sa sampo. That's actually practical way of doing action research. So it depends on how you will do you will do random probability sampling or in the actual selection of samples requires no particular order or system. Random sampling siya. Or pwedeng non-random sampling techniques or samples without, uh, without regarding their probability of occurrence. You can also have the lottery method. This is common. Basic statistics po natin ito. Numbers representing members of a population are drawn at the random we have the table of random numbers. If you will use the table of random numbers, cluster sampling or area sampling technique, this is more cost effective if the population is spread over the wide geographic regions. This is commonly used by the Department of Agriculture when they are surveying on organic farming. So they, they are doing cluster sampling. And of course, for non-probability sampling, it does not require a complete list of the members of the population, but it is referred as bias or judgment sampling. So more so, kung action research ang pinag-uusapan din natin, pwede na rin tayong mag-venture dito sa purposive sampling. In this method, the selection of sample elements is based on the criteria listed according to the purpose of the study. It's you as the researcher who will write the, the inclusion criteria of your study. So your respondents must be 16 to 15 years of age. They must be residing in this barangay. They must have uh, the same level of mathematics performance. So ikaw na the researcher who will uh, justify it. It is the discretion of the researcher. For the sampling, the sample elements is predetermined based on the judgment of the researcher. And for convenience, you gather data at the most convenient time of the researcher. All right. So there are also types of errors, which I would like to emphasize this one. So the types of errors in survey are, sample of these are the coverage errors. For example, listing subjects in the population is inadequate that a group is unintentionally excluded in the selection of the sample. The normally term bias in the selection sample. So hindi siya dapat kasali, na isali. So there will be coverage errors. Non-response errors. What happened if this if your respondents were not able to, to fill out all the surveys or the statement of the surveys? The thing there is, see to it. See to it. Kasi if hindi nila na, na fill out an yung survey, talagang babalikan mo yun. Okay? Yung iba kasi ang ginagawa e, eh, kung nakalimutang answeran, kung ano yung most common na lalabas na answer ng ibang respondents, o yun na lang din ang bibilugan. Okay? Yun po is dishonesty in research. Okay? Uh, we need also to protect the, the credibility of our data. And even the sampling error. The sampling error of course, when the information between the population and the sample are not properly selected. And this should be addressed 
by ensuring that this if this is the list of your respondents they should have uh, this uh, quality assurance protocol na talagang sila yung maseselect and even in the measurement error and measurement error comes with the wrong questions we ask to our students attributed yan po sa instrument natin so we need to observe all of this so reduce error in measurement by the way we are guided with the reliability and validity of our research tool does our research tool measure what it intends to measure or does our research tool is reliable halimbawa ulit-ulitin mo man yan na ipasurvey yun pa rin na yun ang lalabas na score nila okay so for pretesting before you use a tool in your research dapat na pretest po muna yan no formal review of the questionnaire and pretesting can be done by way of uh, asking respondents who are not really your actual respondents to answer the the tool or even asking experts from the field to to check the research tool so example are problematic questions the cost of data collection even the response rate distribution of key variables and interview-based surveys, the quality of work by the interviewers. So as to the response rate, nasabi ko ito kanina, uh, magdagdag kayo ng kwan, excess ng respondents nyo para kung meron mang hindi maka-answer doon, talagang makukuha nyo pa rin yung number of respondents ng study ninyo. So most of these are general problems. Uh, poor introduction and instruction, unclear or undefined terms, avoid this one, unclear or ambiguous response, too many, don't know responses, too many questions left unanswered, poor question or lack of flow, items with little or no variance, bias or offensive questions. We have this gender sensitive research tool training. No, na yung pagbigay natin ng question is dapat hindi rin siya nakaka-create ng problema sa culture at sa orientation ng ating mga respondents. And time to complete the questionnaire is also important. Avoid too lengthy na research tool. Okay? So, specific self-administered. Uh, too little or too much space for open-ended question responses for question layout and unclear escape instructions. Sa ating mga teachers, we are oriented with assessment of learning on the face validity of our research tool, of our instrument. So, ganun din. I-observe din natin ito. Okay? So, now, uh, before I will end, I'd like to give you this one, the sample size for pretest. If you would ask, how many sample size will I get to pretest my research instrument. For focus group and cognitive behavioral techniques, a small number of respondents will suffice. Usually, no more than a dozen. Okay na yun. No? For a pilot study, 50 completed questionnaire would be a bare minimum with 100 to 150, a much better number. For a sample composition, the pretest respondent should be similar to that from the survey population. For focus group and cognitive interviews or behavior coding, we recommend selecting respondents based on the quota sample to maximize representation of the population. Try also to choose respondents with differing views or attitudes measures in the study. And for pilot study, the sample comparable to that used for the real survey would be, would be best. And for questionnaire completion time, see to it that for all types of data collection method, recording the time to complete the interview or questionnaire can be very helpful. Kung nag-survey ba kayo, pinapasulat nyo ba yung time started at time finish? Dapat po, palagay natin yan. Okay, so may I give to you some other impacts on equity, quality, and efficiency which can be a researchable topic. Access to infra, devices, and resources. I hope you can come up action research with this. Availability of online learning resources and strategies tailored to students from marginalized groups. Remote areas, limitations, gender, ethnicity. Have you conducted research on the quality of online teaching learning? No, ito yung question natin ngayon, online learning support for students. No, how do we define effective teacher 
during the new normal. Meron na ba tayong tool to measure students' uh, ability or teachers' uh, effect effectiveness in the new normal? So pwede niyong gawing research po yan. Modes of assessment and integrity and the relevance of curriculum to changing demands of emerging industries and future shape of the workforce in the post-COVID-19. Okay, so some of the suggested research topics you can venture. Number one, effectiveness of the Slido app in enhancing students' online engagement in physics. Number two, effectiveness of self-learning modules or SLM to the performance of elementary learners. Implementation of self-learning kit in science among grade three, teachers' readiness, competencies, and performance of kindergarten, effects of online peer review method in paragraph writing for grade seven learners. Some of you can do content analysis of supplementary learning materials for teaching reading in the primary grades. So ito yung mga patikawis natin na pwede nyo i-adapt siguro. Design and evaluation of contextualized graphic-based reading materials for primary grade learners. Design and evaluation of a learning guide for contemporary regional literature. Readability assessment of localized supplementary learning materials. Customized chat box content as learning language support tool for grammar and vocabulary competence enhancement. And the use of GIS in geography lessons and be based on teachers' opinions or students' opinions. So balik tayo dito sa parts of research proposal. I hope pwede na rin kayong mag-isip uh, ng title ninyo, introduction, literature review, research question, limitation, methodology, sampling, gathering, ethical issues, data analysis. Okay? So if you would like to download this uh, research, this will guide you on the use of technology-based tools in ensuring quality of publishable journal articles. It does not mean that journal articles po yan, it is also applicable for writing your action research. We presented their tools for you to be used. Online free tools po ang mga yon. Okay? Then, uh, I have co-authored an action research book, How to Conduct Action Research in Education. This is a guide for teachers in the basic ed, higher ed, and graduate students. Pwede po kayong mag-order niyan. <laughs> Nag-pro-promote po ako uh, if you would like to venture much more on action research. Though our time is limited, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the organizers of this event so that we could really collectively fulfill our roles as educators, as knowledge seekers, as contributors of development for our education. And a takeaway quote from Mark Van Doren, the art of teaching is the art of assisting discovery. Hello? Okay, again, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Gilbert. Again, Sir Gilbert, thank you for allocating and providing us a good discussion or a very good discussion about action research. Okay, before you proceed to our open forum again, allow me to say sorry for a technical difficulty. In the early part of the program, we were able to experience some technical difficulty. In my case, I am presently here in the province while the members of the technical committee are in the city. So we are presently in ECQ or MECQ, so we are less mobile. So as to our communication, we are experiencing also some difficulty. Anyway, for sure, every one of you here will agree that the whole discussion of Sir Magulod went smooth and we were able to absorb lots of new information na masasabi natin very applicable, especially with the new normal that we are experiencing today. Okay, so again, virtual applause to Dr. Gilbert Magulod Jr. of Cagayan State University. Okay, Thank now we are much, not done sir. yet with you, Sir awesome. Gilbert, as we will now pro proceed to our open forum. Our session for this afternoon is actually supposed to be allocated for only two hours. But we will cater to as many or as many questions as possible, depending on Sir Gilbert later on and also on the availability of our time. We will select questions raised by our participants here in Zoom and also in YouTube. And to those who will be tapped to ask questions, I would like you to introduce yourself first, the institution where you are affiliated with, and your question. Okay? I guess you have here those who were raising their hands a while ago. 
So we have those who are interested to raise their questions personally. And I would like to start with Ma'am Annette here. Ma'am Annette, I would like you again to introduce yourself first, the institution where you're affiliated with, and your question. Good afternoon, Sir Gilbert. Good afternoon, Ma'am Annette. Opo. I'm Annette Russell from Crossing Bayabas National High School, Division of Davao City. Uh, I am now in my thesis writing, and I just want to ask a question regarding, since most of the teachers in the neonormal education are being challenged with the different tasks Especially to us, we have uh, we are doing our paperwork. Aside from paperwork, we are sorting our modules. Now, it comes to my mind the possible topic that I choose is a challenges of crossing Bayabas National Teach uh, National High School teachers in the implementation of the new normal education. My question is. Is there a or where we get an adapted questionnaire uh, regarding this topic or uh, should I use qualitative research? Because I'm still on the process of thinking of it, sir. Okay, ma'am. A very good study. The, the, you, are, you will be assessing the readiness of your institution with the new normal implementation. Uh, for me, because you are asking if you can get a questionnaire for this, my and whether you can use qualitative, my suggestion, ma'am, is you, if you want to dig deeper into the problem of inquiry, you use mixed method. You use questionnaire as well as you use interview technique or triangulation para mas makuha mo talaga yung, yung depthness ng study mo. And as to the questionnaire, we have a lot of uh, standardized questionnaire po available in the internet. You just go to Google Scholar, to Semantic uh, Scholar, marami po tayong makukuha doon. Ilimit mo lang po yung variables ng study mo kung will it be limited to the size of the learner, size of the teachers, no? uh, the population, the budget and resources of your institution. Pwede mo pong i-correlate and ang mga ito so that you can come up with a whole program approach para makita mo, para ma ang, ang nakikipakasing offshoot ng research mo is you will, have, you will be having a program or a proposed action plan for your institution on how to better cater the needs of your students. So marami po kayong pwedeng makuha doon. But my suggestion is mixed method po ang gabitin mo ma'am. Mixed Thank method. you po, sir. Thank you, Ma'am Annette. Congratulations po sa thesis ninyo. <laughs> okay, there you have it. Ma'am Annette Sarte all the way from Davao. Okay, do we have any other participant here who would like to raise a question to Sir Gilbert? Again, kindly press the raise hand button if you would like to personally ask a question to Dr. Gilbert. For now, I guess we have several questions appearing in the chat box or in the chat function. We actually have questions also appearing in YouTube. We have one from um, Venus Imperatriz Makam. I guess it's more of uh, seeking for an advice. Sir, okay. from um, Venus, please give us advice on how our action research can be published. I have already made one five years ago. I am attending the seminar to refresh my knowledge because I want to make another one. What do you think of that, Sir Gilbert? Wow. So, yun po. Yun po ang position natin sa university. We are in charge of publishing. But, yes, ma'am. Definitely, the product, yung output ng research nyo, dapat napapublish po yan para marami ang makabasa at makakita at marami pong mag-replicate. You can publish your research outputs by looking for journals in education available in the web. In fact, we have also Philippine journals here in the Philippines na nagpapublish po ng mga outputs ng researches in education. So, ma'am, ang suggestion ko po dyan is i-publish po ninyo ang output ninyo. Eventually, uh, this will help. Kung five years ago nyo siya nakandak, is still fresh, is still applicable po siya. But kung 10 years na po, hindi na po pwede. You need to reconduct, you need to redo the study. Pero kung 5 years, 
medyo okay pa po siya. You can still publish. Okay, thank you Sir Gilbert. Before we cater the the uh, the question here of Ma'am Zairel Matcha, she's raising her hand. Let us try to provide answer first to the question appearing in the slide. It is a question from Ma'am Jean Michelle T. Reyes. Sir, is it okay or effective to read first RRL or going to step two before identifying the problem or step one first in making action research? What do you think of that, sir? Okay. Uh, personally, po, you presented two sides of a coin. That uh, ideally, when we talk of research, para po, ito, ito po yung sa isang situation, so that your research can be fresh, can be published, you need to do review of related literature first because doon po nyo makikita kung ano yung kulang pa, yung wala pa sa body of knowledge. Pero pag action research po siya, you can definitely go to step one because the problem is there, the problem is within you, it's already in your hand, nasa, nasa inyo na po, kitang-kita mo na po yung problema. Kung yun na po yung problema, mag you just identify it and do literature review. Pwede po yun. As long as ang option po natin dyan is na-define nyo yung, uh, yung what is new, what is already found out about that variable or about that topic. Parehas po yan na uh, pwede. Okay po yan. Sir, uh, you are muted. Sir Jose, you are muted po. Okay, sorry, sorry, sir. Again, thank you, Sir Gilbert. <laughs> uh, okay, let's proceed now to our next uh, person. We have Zyrel Macha. Zyrel, again, I would like you to introduce yourself first, the institution where you are affiliated with, and your question. Hello, ma'am. Good afternoon, po. Good afternoon. Uh, I am Zyrel Macha, po, an instructor from Cavite State University, po. Okay, so since we are new in this action research, especially in our field study too, and then uh, I am uh, an educator po, teacher, yes. instructor po na mga BSc. Now, uh, what is your advice for us since it is new to our curriculum to have an action research, especially for practice teachers po? Okay, uh, Ma'am Sariel Matcha, I like to emphasize that uh, I am also a product of the nutrition education way back in 2010. And dito nag start yung field study 1 to 6 natin. And your concern with the, you are new with the, kasi may subject kayo ngayon na research in education 1, research in education 2, di ba? Uh, ang advice ko po dito, uh, since uh, actually action research is not really new in our, in our curriculum, in our program, it is actually embedded in the different uh, uh, professional education subjects. Uh, pero depende na kasi noon yung strategy ng ating mga, mga teachers. The advice here is your field study subjects are actually research-based in its nature. Why? Because uh, during the time when I taught field study, it's more on for the students to gather information in the field schools, in the different schools. So nakukuha sila ng mga data as to the teachers, uh, philosophy of education, if you could still recall, eh, yung mga yun are actually data that can be converted into action research. And my advice is that uh, let's, let's make a practice for us sa uh, teacher education institutions na talagang embedded ang pagre-research sa lahat ng subjects natin. Very important kasi yun, plano na na teachers tayo. So yung bagong subjects na research in education 1 and research in education 2 for BE ed program is not actually new for us. Actually, it's already uh, yung talagang it's a product of kung paano kasi na na na, na revise yung curriculum natin. For in research is nandoon pa rin. Kaya nga meron tayong subject doon na statistics, di ba? Kung ma-recall ninyo, meron din kayong subjects on on curriculum development kasi more on needs analysis ng mga ng mga needs ng mga students natin ito so ngayon lang ka research education so my advice is uh, just continue attending seminars like this 
no uh, when you teach students see to it that they also do research thank you ma'am Cyril uh thank you very much okay thank you again okay, Cyril I, I, I was able all to the way from Cavite State University <laughs> uh okay. sir actually I am planning to conduct a webinar pwede ko kaya kayong kunin as our resource speaker sa aming university thank you po. wow Okay, wow. again, thank you, thank you Zairil. As the time warrants. <laughs> okay. Now, we will proceed with Sir Ben Lee after, after Sir Gilbert providing an answer to this question. This is a question from Jen C. Borja. Hello, sir. Related to remediation and intervention, can you cite a sample study title? I don't know if you were able to provide already, especially okay. with the many examples that you provided in your presentation. What do you think of that, Sir Gilbert? Okay, uh, this is it, uh, Ma'am Jensi Borja. Uh, we defined a while back that remediation is to address the problem of a class. That's why you do remediation. So some parts of the remediation you can do are doing uh, re extra reading time, uh, giving extra reading time to your students or tutoring. Yung mga yun po, yung mga remediation natin. But as to the intervention, we have a lot of interventions we can do. For example, the use of uh, uh, the use of brainstorming technique in enhancing a students' writing skill is also an intervention. The use of different strategies in teaching is an intervention. The use of slido in enhancing students' learning engagement in physics is also an intervention. So, yun po. Yung definition kasi natin is remediation kung talagang kailangan mo talagang mag-extend ng additional activity for the students to enhance their skills. But intervention is a way also to put up a certain, establish a, a strategy or what to enhance a student's attitude or learning performance. So, depende na yan po kung ano yung ipoposture nyo kung remediation or intervention. Parehas lang naman yan kung action research ang pinag-uusapan po natin. Okay, let's proceed now to another participant. Raising his hand is Sir Ben Lee. Sir Ben Lee, I would like you to introduce yourself first, the institution where you're affiliated with, and your question. Yes, po. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, uh, sir. I'm actually from uh, Mariano Pirata National High School. Uh, Malita Davao Occidental. Then uh, my question goes like this, sir. Uh, can you give an um, strategies or 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 a technique, no? What to do? Uh, I I'm going or I I supposed to make an action research, but then uh, I do not know how to develop a hypothesis hypothesis. To start with, can you give some advice about about it, sir? Okay, thank you, okay. sir Ben Lee. <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, basically, uh, action research is all, all about question. It's all about hypothesis. Uh -huh. Thinking that if I will use this strategy, will it improve the students' literacy? If using this kind of learning material in the classroom, will it improve the students' interest? So you are already hypothesizing uh, a certain idea and that is actually kaya nga research the beginning of a research is curiosity so mm -hmm. yun sir lahat ng naiisip mo na tanong ay mga hypothesis po yan unless na itest mo siya through a scientific process and it will qualify uh, yun po ang beginning ng action research natin so my, my advice po is to a technique on how you can uh, develop a research uh, a, a, a action research Lahat po ng action research, sir, ay hypothetical in nature as long as hindi pa siya nakakanda. <laughs> Yun po yung, yung idea natin. Sir, ano po ang field of specialization ninyo? Ay, nakamute po kayo, sir. Biology po, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. So, ang dami-dami po yung pwedeng gamitin na intervention sa biology. In fact, okay. you can use GIS, you can use the Geographic information system, kung ano pa man yung gusto ninyo, sir. Biology is more on, uh, on do, do it's, it's more on students developing science process skills. So marami po kayong pwedeng gamitin na strategy dyan. Good okay. luck, sir Ben Lee. Uh, hope you, to sir. meet you soon na natapos mo na yung action research. Okay po, sir. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, po. sir. 
Okay, do you, there you have it, Sir Benly, all the way from Davao. Again, we are happy that we have a great number of participants na talagang nagre-raise ng kanilang hands for them to be personally recognized and their questions be catered. But prior to that, we will proceed later on with Sir Mark Ritchie. But let us have here first an answer to the question of a faculty from Eastern Visaya State University, Segundina Devota A. Dilao. According to her, sir, what about if it's a nutrition intervention implemented for teachers in school? Would it be a good action research? Okay, talagang nangungunsulta na yung mga, yung mga participants natin dito trying to confirm if their uh, title is uh, suitable for an action research. Okay, po. Uh, Ma'am Sagundina, uh, I think uh, your research is also okay po, pero the question is why teachers? Kasi if you will implement nutrition intervention, have you, do you have already an initial data as to the BMI of your teachers? Lahat ba ng teachers po natin ay yung mga teachers po ba natin yan is malnourished or, or obese or what? So, tignan po natin. Uh, Pwede po siya, as long as you can justify the research gap, you can justify the need, why this is the, the study you would like to conduct. Pero in other way around, uh, nutrition intervention is usually conducted to students. And through nutrition intervention, yung pagkandak nila ng, actually yung basis nila ng pagkandak ng food feeding program sa mga schools, sa mga ed-ed schools is based yan doon sa survey, based yan sa action research na karamihan sa mga estudyante, sa mga learners ay below normal yung kanilang nutritional intake. So ito po yung pwede niyong tignan. So if you are asking kung pwede sa teacher, pwede po siya as long as you can justify. Bakit teachers? So but sir, the way you look at it, it's quite unusual no? for us to see that we have a nutrition intervention for teachers. Okay, yes, looking sir, at the yes, question. Sir. Okay. Anyway, let's proceed now to Sir Mark Ritchie. Sir Mark Ritchie, I would like you to introduce yourself, the institution, and your question. It would be ideal if you are also visible in the screen for us also to see your face. Sir, hello? Yep, sir. We hello, can hear you now. Hello, sir. Jose, can you hear me? Yep, thank sir. You we can hear you. Uh, thank you. Sorry for because of the bandwidth, or baka it might affect. So I just want to relay the question. Uh, thank you for the opportunity first. And sir, I have questions about ethics in relation to observation. By the way, my affiliation, I'm with, I'm working in Jiangsu University in China, po, but I'm in work from home now because I got stuck wow. because of the pandemic. So I have questions about ethics, sir. First, about observation. Actually, sir, ako po yung nag-sulat nag, nag, uh, na about intervention, monitoring the intervention is very difficult because when you do the observation, what, what, what's your advice? Should I tell my students beforehand? Because the problem is they will, be, they will of course, bring their best foot forward so we cannot really observe the natural way that they behave. But if I yes. won't tell them that I'm observing them, it may, it may have impact on their privacy, right? So that's my first question. And the last one is about ethics when it comes to the digital setup. Let's say po, I will have my students involved in the action research. And my, let's say some students are okay. But when I ask their parents, they don't, they don't give consent. So which one will be will prevail, the parents' consent or the students' uh, uh, likeliness to participate, right? Likeness to participate, sorry. So that, those are my two questions. And thank you, Sir Jose, for the opportunity. Okay, you're welcome, Sir Mark. Okay. Let's proceed now with Doc Gilbert. Okay, Sir Mark Ritchie has two questions. The first one is the, when telling students that uh, you are observing them, might have an uh, effect on their, on their performance. It's our ba basic ethics in research that when we do participant observation, they, must, should be, they should be informed. Because if we are not informing them, it can be grounded for deception. So at least uh, in a nice way, sir, we can inform them that oh, we are doing an assessment of this. Uh, just be with yourself. And the result of this, uh, this uh, activity, your performance will be 
by action research, at least informing them that it is for a research purpose. Okay, and the second question is, what if parents uh, will not agree to to use or to 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 make their children as your respondents? The thing there, sir, is you cannot force anyone. You cannot force really. This is it's an ethics in research that you cannot force somebody to participate in the study. If that's the case, the suggestion is you look for other participants who are willing to participate in your study. I hope I was able to answer your question. Okay, there you have it. Uh, what do you think of it, uh, Sir Mark? Uh, uh, sir, okay, thank you po kasi, uh, hello? hello? Yep, sir, we can hear yes, you, sir. Uh, so, thank you po kasi there are times that the students like to participate, but of course, you know, we have to ask the permission of a parent. So, I'll go with your ano po, advice, po, pieces of advice. Thank you again sa PSA for this event. Thank you. Okay, there you have thank it, you Sir so Mark Ricci. Okay, so... We will cater now another question appearing here in our screen. We have from Ma'am Helen Lejos. Uh, Doc Gilbert, are you still with us? Yes, The sir, question I is, here. what yeah, is yeah, the yeah. pattern on making title for action research? Uh, what do you think of that, sir? Okay. Uh, I suppose that I, I should have been presented the, the making of sexy titles for action research. Actually, we do not have this general pattern for making action research title as long as it passed on the on the kasi pero yung sa guidelines kasi talagang may guidelines po. It should not be more than 15 words, something like that. Pero that trend today kasi is uh, we have what we call the sexy titles na tinatawag. Katulad ng present ko kanina, abot kamay ang pagsasanay, design and development o pulta sensory kit for students learning in mathematics. So these are some of the sexy titles. Uh, the, actually, in the pattern of making a title, as long as the main variable in the study are present in the in the text, and basa, nababasa mo pa lang yung title, alam mo na talaga yung, yung gusto niyang, yung, yung, yung scope ng study, that is actually a good research title. I hope I can come up with another, another session on making a, a sexy title for action research. Okay, uh, we're looking forward if, uh, on that, on that talk. I suggest, Ma'am Helen, sir, sir, sir Jose, to, yep, you can sir. contact me personally, Ma'am, so that I could share the slides for you. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you, sir. Let's proceed now to another question here. Can we have Ma'am Mary Christie? Ma'am Mary, I would like you to introduce yourself, your yes, uh, institution, and your question. Yes, I'm Mary Christie M. Seneta from Pasta Elementary School, Division of Babusan del Sur. My, my question is all about if we publish our action research, do we need to have a quality assurance? Sino po ba mag quality assurance po ito, sir? Okay. okay. What do you think of that, Doc? Okay, Ma'am Christie. When you publish your action research, it depends on the journals kung saan mo siya ipapublish. Will it be in a journal or would it be in a form of bibliography? Kasi in a two way, may dalawang dalawang way po kayo diyan. Kung gusto mong i-self publish yung research mo, pwede mo po siyang ipa-review sa mga authorities sa <coughs> school nyo or sa district niyo to give their comments para nang sa ganun mas mataas yung quality assurance niya. But if you would like to publish your research in national journals, in international journals, sa journal po ang gagawa ng appraisal nung article ninyo. Sila po yung magbibigay ng review and later on i-improve mo hanggang ma-accept po siya. So once your action research will be published, that already carries the quality assurance that your paper has been uh, reviewed and it bears the quality of the journal and you have contributed in the in the in your discipline. Yun po yung sagot. Okay, ko. so again, so I guess in the case of DepEd, they have a different process, especially in dealing with publication. Of, of teachers in the basic education. Among universities, obviously, they have their own institutions na nagpi-filter ng mga pinapublish or mga possibly to be published. Okay? So, we have here Sir, Sir Romel A. Valiesa. Another question asking for confirmation. Sir, pwede po bang gawa ng action research ang communication barrier between students in the school? 
actually you presented two two ideas here po pwede po yan when you do an action research for for language language education ito po yung pinofocus po kasi natin because we are developing the students language competence so communication barrier barrier is a concern that can be subjected for the students uh, and of course sa school so pwede pong magandang kwan po yan magandang pong action research po yan Provided na tignan mo lang po kung ano po ba yung gusto mong method. Will it be survey or you would like to implement an intervention to, hum, to, to, to reduce the communication barrier among students and the school. So pwede po yan, pwede po yan. Nasa sa inyo po yan kung paano nyo ipackage at paano nyo makikita kung ano ba talaga yung contribution ng research na yan sa institution ninyo. Okay, time check. It's already 4.45. Uh, siguro, sir, it would be ideal if we are to allocate the remaining 15 minutes, providing answers to some of the yes, questions sir. here, and also to those who are raising their hands. And to those, again, who are asking questions na more likely na hindi na po natin makikater, we will uh, try to reply to some of your queries raised after the end of the session. You can, I guess, personally message Dr. Gilbert for your questions or your queries. Okay, let's proceed now with Sir Sunny okay. Melgar. Sir Sunny, I would like you to introduce yourself. And your institution and your question. Okay, sir. Good afternoon. I'm good afternoon, sir. Car from Vito National High School, Division of Sagay City, Negros Occidental. Um, actually, I am in the action research now. Uh, pin pinapa approve pa lang po sa division. But then my worry is that since um, uh, uh, virtual tayo ngayon or uh, hindi tayo makapag face to face. How about the, the authenticity of the responses, sir? Or, kasi tinetest ko kasi yung, yung gusto kong ma-increase yung test scores ng mga bata sa science. So, paano ba doon po ba yun, sir? Yung authenticity ng answers nila. Since hindi ko sila nakikita, is sila yung nag-answer noon, ganun. Okay, what do you okay. think of that, though? <laughs> Same as also in the way how your students are answering the modules, how do you assess the authenticity of their answers? Ganon mm -hmm. din po yun sa kwan. Uh, preferably po, ang pinakamaganda po dyan is, uh, it's, it's better if you have the, the luxury of time and the luxury of uh, safety to go to your learners so that you can individually gather data. Para mm -hmm. wala pong duda na talagang responses nila yun. Mag-alat ka po ng time, sir, i-plano mo po. With proper coordination with your community officials, you can really conduct. Papayagan ka naman po doon. Okay, thank you po. Okay. So I guess one of the points delivered by Doc a while ago na masasabi natin very effective, especially in dealing with the new normal, is the use of the social media, video apps, especially in, in validating and confirming sa kung nakikita nga ba ta talaga natin yung mga respondents natin o hindi. Um, that is, again, conniving to the challenge of the new normal. So again, thank you, Sir Sunny Melgar. He's all the way from Sagay. Now, let's proceed to another question here. We have Ma'am Genevieve Biliwa. Sir, is fundamental research the same from the basic research? Can we have the confirmation? Doc? Yeah. Hello, sir. Hello, Ma'am Genevieve. Uh, ang pinang term ko kasi sa mga fundamental research kanina is ito yung mga researches on applied, evaluative, and all of these. Yung talagang kailangan mo talagang maggawa ng research na hardcore. So yun ang pinang term ko po sa fundamental research. Kaya basically, basic research can be under fundamental research kasi you can do... Uh, you can do experiment, you can do uh, kung, kung ano pa yung mga ano po doon. Ang pinag-usapan po kasi natin kanina is on the action research, which is not really, uh, hindi po kasi talaga not hardcore ang pagkandak ng action research, kundi it's more on the practical way. Pero sometimes kasi we have the misconception that uh, a fundamental research can be qualified or classified as an action research. So, Siguro ma'am, you can contact me if you would need additional information of this. We can talk personally. Thank you. Okay, nice to hear it from Dr. Gilbert. Now let us have here this person who has an account, Galaxy A50. Okay, I would like you to introduce yourself. It would be ideal if you are visible in the screen. Introduce yourself to us and your question. So do we acquire legit information hey. to conduct an experimental research and developmental research? Then Galaxy A50. Source material. 
share a while ago. For us, then that's for the users. Then, then okay. You... Galaxy A five zero. I'm yeah. asking you to unmute your microphone. Oh, uh, I can I answer the question from Doctor Dandri Abog, sir. Okay, sir. Good, sir. Uh, uh, well, waiting that, for this Galaxy A five zero. Okay. Do we acquire uh, legend kasi... information? Continue, doc. Experiment. Uh, yes, po. you can use the materials I shared, particularly on the use of Google Scholar, on the use of uh, the different tools and techniques in, in getting uh, literature reviews. Pwede po, even the use of online sampling. Pwede po. Pwede nyo pong mag makuha ito uh, when you are conducting experimental research or even developmental research. So pwede po. Pwede po. Okay. Can we have... Grace Deliote instead. Okay, Mom Grace. Okay, Galaxy A50 is also available now. But I think it would be ideal for us to proceed with Mom Grace Deliote first. Mom Grace, introduce to us yourself, your institution, and your question. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I am Grace D. Deliote Gonsilio from Spamas, Malita Daba Occidental. Uh, my question is more on. Uh, policy making because I am in the top management. May I ask if action research is incorporated in the undergraduate curriculum of Cagayan State University because in SPAMAS, we focus on full-blown or in-depth research. I see it as a good practice because DepEd are encouraging great teachers to do action research. So may I know if this is a uh, practice in CSU? Okay. <laughs> in the different... Uh, hello, Ma'am Grace. Yeah, po. Uh, particularly in that College of Teacher Education or in the in teacher education programs, they have their subjects research. So, incorporated po ang, ang research as a subject. And kung hindi man po siya na-offer as a subject in a particular degree program, we see to it that yung mga yung research na yan is incorporated in other subjects like in general education because we can just allow students naman po to conduct research. Actually po, uh, for teacher education, na bago po kasi yung curriculum nila, yung degree program nila, kaya particularly the BEN program, bachelor, bachelor in Elementary Education, meron na po kasi silang dalawang research. So research one and research two. Kaya we expect that after graduation of these students na may research one and two, talagang bihasa na po sila when they will be in the field, when they will be teachers in the field. So yun po. Oh, okay. Yun po, Ma'am Grace. Thank you, Ma'am Grace. Po. Okay, can you have no Galaxy A50? Hello, sir. Hi, Wala sir. Wala akong video po. Hindi ko ma-open yung camera ko. So, okay lang, sir. Kindly introduce yourself, the institution, okay. and the question. Uh, I'm Efren Olino from San Miguel National High School, SDO Pangasinan 2. So my question, sir, is uh, action research. Uh, the first year when the action research is introduced to the, by DepEd, some titles are focused on the classroom problems. So can I, can I or can we conduct a topic and actually mm -hmm. search within the municipality or district, sir? Uh, specifically on which area, sir? Uh, within the municipality, the, 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 the school, the municipality, we, a problem within the problem, problem with school, classroom problem within the municipality. Okay, Sir Gilbert, what do you think of that? Yes, sir. Uh, we categorize po action research according to school base or classroom base, school base, district base, or region. <laughs> or kung may funding ka po galing sa basic education research fund, pwede po na siya national yun. Uh, yes, sir. As long as action research pa rin po siya, yun lang po nilawakan mo lang po yung scope ng yung, nung respondents mo. Pero... Uh, you can really, you can really, kwan po. It's, it's actually an action research pa rin. Depende na rin po yan kung ano yung approach mo, ano yung method mo dyan. Okay, sir. Pwede Thank po. you po, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you po. Thank you, sir. I guess the next uh, question is coming from Dr. Jonard, who is also raising his hand. 
Sir Jonard, is your question different to that of the one appearing here in the screen? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone, uh, researchers. Uh, I'm Mr. Jonard Reyes from Sambonga I am a teacher in grade five. So actually, my, uh, that's my question, sir, but uh, let me correct the questions here uh, below. He, I will only give uh, SIM material to the uh, control uh, group. It's not a control group, actually. No, I uh, correct that one already. Uh, it's actually experimental. So my I have uh, I doubted about the upon uh, doing my research. Uh, I'm more concerned now about the control group. So I. I try my best to implement the, the I mean the intervention, but then I am concerned about what happened to the control group. I have done nothing actually, so that is I uh, uh, spontaneously coming from my mind during uh, the attending this uh, webinar, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, since you are doing it through experimental, kasi nakikita ko meron kang control group at meron kang experimental group, and you are citing that. Uh, ano ang pwede mong gawin sa control group. Uh, katulad po ng pag-experiment po natin, kung control group siya, uh, we do not really do any intervention to the control group unless expose them to the natural way of learning. And for your experimental group, sila po yung ma-expose doon sa talagang intervention mo. Pero si to it po na both groups, are, uh, both groups have the same level para makikita mo talaga yung differences. Katulad din po ng pag-apply ng fertilizer yan, sir, uh, makiki masasabi mo na effective yung intervention mo kung talagang wala pa, wala pang nalagay na fertilizer doon sa ground. Talagang yung palang, yung palang intervention mo agiging uh, intervention niya, magiging fertilizer niya. Parang ganun po. So ang suggestion ko, sir, is see to it that your control group and experimental group have the same uh, level bago mo sila i-expose para makita mo talaga yung difference. We have nothing to do with the control group unless talagang uh, you just teach them in a natural way, in the traditional way. Yun po. If, sir, okay. Jose, if you have additional... Uh, okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, do we have uh, another additional information, Doc? Uh, John Hurt? Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh... I had a uh, me question about the replication. So one of my, uh, uh, let's say, mentoring research advised us to, uh, during the conduct of intervention, advise us to conduct a intervention or uh, this uh, I called uh, same or strategic intervention materials in 15 replication. So wow. uh, I doubted, uh, do I have to, it is really required to, to conduct in 15 replication? Okay, sir. Uh, this is the thing when we talk of replication kasi, no, I just like to have an analogy of this. Uh, paano po masasabi na guwapo kayo kung isa lang ang nagsasabi? Kaya kailangan mo pong <laughs> magtanong pa sa iba na guwapo po ba ako? At yung sa 15 na yon na nagtanungan mo yung sinabing guwapo ka nga, talagang guwapo ka. <laughs> so in action research, sir, you do really an replication to validate the purpose of validation. But sa 15 replication po, hindi po necessary na 15 yan. Kahit po 10 yan, basta ang importante is nakuha mo na yung saturation or talagang nakuha mo na talaga yung, yung talagang confident na confident ka na sa data mo. Yun po yung sagot ko dyan. Kaya ito po yung issue kasi natin sa Thank replication. Thank you. Po. Opo. Okay, medyo mahaba na po yung discussion natin, natin dito ngayon. I guess you will have one live question and we will have one last question here in the slide, okay? The question is from Rudy Mariano Jr. According to Sir Rudy, how can we conduct the data gathering instruments since face-to-face -face is not permitted as of this time with the new normal? without affecting the reliability of the data. Is there any ICT software that we can use? Thanks. I guess uh, while listening to your discussion, uh, Dr. Gilbert, I was able to absorb some. I think it would be ideal for you to provide them again uh, some of the information. 
Okay, Sir Sir Jose. Uh, Sir Rudy, yeah, you could actually have other softwares for you to gather, particularly online survey. Meron po kayo dyan yung ginagamit niyo na Google Survey Form, Monkey Survey Form, Jot Form. Marami po tayong nagagamit na mga tool. At kung talaga pong, Juan, the question on the reliability po is, it lies on how will you orient your respondents. Kasi, alimbawa, kung nare-reach mo naman po sila through phone, you can actually inform them or kung ang pinaka effective na means na ma-reach mo ang respondents mo is through, if, through Facebook, you can actually uh, contact them via messenger or call them, then you can gather the data right on the spot kung ang concern mo dito ay reliability of the data. At least is habang tinatanong mo na sa respondents, eh, sila na yung nagbibigay ng sagot. Okay po yun. Wala pong problema. So as to the ICT software, ang dami-dami pong software na pwede nila natin gamitin. Ang kwan lang po is as long as meron tayong Gmail, may email, pwede po tayong makagamit ng mga uh, tools na yan. Let's take the use Uh, let's take the opportunity of using these tools po para one. Actually, mas maganda rin po sa ang paggather ng physical pero it takes really na yung effort at yung time mo. Pag online, talagang uh, mas mapapabilis pero yun lang po kasi is the privacy of the data and the reliability. So nasa inyo po yun kung paano mo i-ensure yun. Nasa planning naman po ng data, ng research proposal ninyo yun. Okay, you thank you, Rudy. Dr. Gilbert. I think we don't have any other person pressing the raise hand button. And I don't think that our time is still enough for us to provide answers to the many questions appearing in that function. Can we have concluding words from Dr. Gilbert? Okay, sir. Uh, I would like to extend my thanks for the opportunity given to me by POMI, particularly Dr. Ricky Kebinko who was the one who contacted me before. And to you, the organizers of this activity, our host, Dr. Jose Abrian, marami pong salamat for the opportunity. I am not uh, a doctor, sir. <laughs> and I am very much elated that I was able to share also my insights, my personal encounter in doing action research. As a concluding statement, uh, research should be part of our professional development. Uh, ang lahat po ng bagay yan, kung scientifically uh, evidence siya, scientifically sound, our decisions in institution, our decision in doing, in implementing policies ay based po yan sa action research, based po yan sa science. Uh, wala po tayong problema doon. And the opportunity given to me is really, uh, I feel, I, I, feel really elated po. Napaka, nap, nakakatuwa naman na makapag-share po ako ng, ng something para sa, sa ating lahat. So if you wish to contact me, uh, uh, you can contact me po. You can just chat me kung may mga concerns kayo through my Facebook account or through my Gmail. And uh, I'd like to, uh, to recognize that more activities like this, uh, let's just... Uh, Uh, watch our the, the, the yeah stay connected lang po tayo sa POMI para we can learn more of this. Marami pong salamat. God bless po. Mabuhay tayo. Stay safe. Okay, there you have it again. Virtual applause to Dr. Gilbert Pasqua, Kabilangan Magulo Jr. of Cagayan State University. And it also ends our question and answer portion. We will try to reply to some of your queries raised after the end of this session. And again, you've heard it from Dr. Magulod. He's very willing to answer your queries. Just personally message him on Facebook or on his personal email account. Okay? Now let's proceed to the giving of certificate. Can you have now the certificate? Pais I-21, or the Philippine Institute of 21st Century Educators Incorporated, awards the Certificate of Re Recognition to Dr. Gilbert Pasqua Kabilangan Magulo Jr. for imparting his invaluable time, resources, and expertise as resource speaker on the topic, How to Conduct Action Research in the New Normal Series 1 during the conduct of National Virtual Conference for 21st Century Educators, accorded this 19th day of June or of 
June 2021 via Zoom video conferencing, live stream on Pi's I21 Facebook page and POMI YouTube channel. Signed, Professor Ricky A. Kibinko, Virtual Conference Director, and Emmy Jan P. Indonila Palmani, National President, Pi's I21. Before we finally close, again, a virtual applause to Dr. Gilbert Pasqua Kabilangan Magulo Jr. And sir, thank, thank you, you for much, allocating a schedule to the PICE I-21. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Okay. So again, before we finally close our conference, let me read to you some announcements. To earn a certificate of participation, you must sign up the evaluation or attendance form that are posted in Zoom, in our Facebook page, and our YouTube channel in POMI. The certificate of participation and the PDF copy of Dr. Gilbert Pasqua Kabilangan Magulo Jr.'s presentation will be sent to your respective email right after this event upon verification of your attendance. Paid participants who didn't receive their certificate of participation within a day, please email to Century Educators 1920 or 1920 at gmail.com or Century Educator 21 Gmail. Com. To our participants who applied for membership, the amount of 180 pesos will be added for LBC delivery in case the applicant wishes to get the original documents. Membership for at least three organizations is free of LBC delivery charge. We will follow the mailing address stated in your registration form or you can email us your preferred mailing address. Those who failed to make it live can still have the chance to get their certificate by watching the recorded video of the conference on YouTube and Facebook. Just sign up the evaluation or attendance form as a requirement. Before closing our session, I would like to grab this opportunity to thank my fellow members and officers of PIS I-21. This conference will not be possible without the organizers and coordinators. We have Mr. Ricky A. Kibinko, Mr. or Dr. Cyril De La Fuente, Mr. Isidro Villa, Mr. Adam Donald Junio, Mr. Raymond Casho, Mr. Charles Isulan, Mr. Chito Tominez, Mr. Jose Jean Monticado, Mr. John Michael Sonsa, Mr. Jerry Hovacon, and Mrs. Emmy Jan Indonila Palmani. I would like also to thank our consultant, Dr. Nora Ligaspi, and her graduate school students from the University of San Agustin. I would like also to thank my classmates from the PhD Social Science Program of West Visayas State University for attending our conference. To all the active members of our professional organizations, thank you for your continual support. Congratulations also to Dr. Gilbert Pasqua Kabilangan Magulo Jr. for making this virtual conference a successful one. Most importantly, we would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to all of you participants for making this event possible and successful. See you on the next gathering sponsored by our organization. Next month, we will be having a two-day gathering. PICE I-21 will be having a national virtual conference for research with a team retooling research for professional credibility and integrity in the academe. We have four topics and four renowned speakers. We still have Dr. Gilbert Simagula Jr., University Director for Knowledge Management of Cagayan State University on a topic conducting methodology review for qualitative research design. We also have Dr. Leonilo B. Capulso, Chief Executive Officer of Beyond Books Publication on a topic using joint display analysis in mixed method research or MMR. Another one is Dr. I. Arul Rayan. He is a researcher and resource speaker from Tamil Nadu, India. He will discuss a topic about publication in peer-reviewed journals and research presentation. Lastly, we still have, or we have, Professor Resti C. Samosa. He's a research coordinator of Graceville National High School and a faculty member of Colegio de San Gabriel Arcangel on a topic recalibrating research for the new normal using experimental design.
For those who will be attending all of the topics we have, you are expected to receive four certificates of participation. One certificate of recognition for completing the two-day gathering for an amount of 500 pesos. While those who are only interested to attend in one or two or three topics, each session we have is good for 150 pesos. And you are also to receive a certificate of participation on each topic you've attended. Kindly check at our official social media page and channel for details. May I request everyone now to kindly open their camera for a quick photo op. So Jean, so John, kindly facilitate now. Okay, so good afternoon. So we have for at uh, 12, 12 panels. So panel one. So please smile. So ready. One, two, three, and smile. Okay, so panel two. So ready. One, two, three, okay, and smile. Let me take your smile, smile down to panel 12. Okay, uh, smile lang kaya hanggang sa panel 12. <laughs> so ready, one, two, three, and smile. So panel three. So panel four. So ready, one, two, three, and smile. Okay, so next panel. So ready, one, two, three, and smile. Okay, so ready. Next panel. Ready, one. Again, thank you to all of our participants who came all the way from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. See you on our next gathering, especially on the month of July, as we have four topics for you. Stay safe, everyone. God bless, and congratulations. Okay, we have those who are asking about Dr. Magulod's email address. We will uh, provide it to you together with a PDF copy of his presentation. Thank you.
Okay, to those who are asking questions about how to get their certificate of participation, again, just sign up the evaluation form and we will forward to you the certificate upon verification of your attendance. Thank you.